welcome you to Raleigh, North Carolina, Carter Finley Stadium for ACC College Football as the NC State Wolfpack flying high after their win last week against East Carolina. Their second home game of the season against Western Carolina. Another purple and gold team, and Dave Doran leads his pack out of the tunnel onto the field after that win 34-6 against East Carolina last week. This is the seventh all-time meeting between these two schools. All of them have been in Raleigh, and NC State has won the previous six. This presentation of ACC College Football presented by your local Ford dealer. And it is so great to have you with us for our game this afternoon. Tom Wormy along with James Bates. As we mentioned, a win against East Carolina in week one for NC State. A solid foundation to start the season for the Pack James. Absolutely. Always good to beat that rival in 1-0. and And across the college football landscape, how many times this past week, win or lose, did you hear coaches describing their teams? Oh, we were a little bit sloppy, a little bit rusty coming out of the gate. That wasn't the case for Dave Doran's guys. They were so fresh and so clean. Zero turnovers, very few penalties a lot of new faces three new coordinators out there they're really happy with the way they went out and played right out the gate and now you don't have to worry work on big things you just work on a few small things and keep growing you mentioned new faces and that includes sophomore quarterback Matthew McKay his first collegiate start last week McKay was efficient through the air James and he also ran for a couple of touchdowns yep, took care of that football like I said no turnovers for McKay on this offense running the show for the first time and a young pup he was just 16 when he graduated from high school two years ago waited his turn under Finley won the starting job that 25 for 37 not bad numbers for his first start and especially when you look go back and look at the game in the first half he missed a few throws a few throws that he should have had that would have been big time plays came back in the second half went 15 of 18 he's smart he's cool he's calm and he was able to grow in the course of that game yeah other side of the ball for Western Carolina Tyree Adams is their all-american quarterback the senior but he is not with the team this week not in the building. He will not play due to a violation of team policy. Last week against Mercer, he set two school records, but he gives way to sophomore Will Jones. And for more on this story, we go down to the sidelines and Stormy Tony, she's got our startup. It's brought to you by the Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Thank you, Tom. Yes, Will Jones, the redshirt sophomore, knows he has some big shoes to fill on the big stage in what will be his first ever career start. But his head coach, Mark Spear, said he's been practicing fantastic this week. He looked really sharp. And while it might sound crazy, there is no panic in this football team. Jones is one of the most well-respected players on the team for his work ethic and spiritual leadership. And Spears said he just needs to stay himself. Told him, don't go out there and try to be anybody else but Will Jones. This team loves you. They believe in you. Your abilities are all you need. And apparently Jones just looked him dead in the eye when he said that and said, I got you, coach. He feels ready for this moment, has the full confidence of the people around him. So now we just wait and see how that translates onto the field. Stormy, thank you so much for that update and report. And we look forward to your reports and interviews all afternoon long here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Here's your weather report. 85 degrees, 49% humidity, and light winds. It is perfect weather for college football. The second game of the season for NC State, which beat East Carolina last week, 34-6 to, to start the year. NC State is led by seventh-year head coach Dave Doran, 44 and 34. His record at NC State, that's the fourth most, most wins in school history. And this is his first game coaching against Western Carolina. Across the way, it is Mark Spear, eighth year, leading the Western Carolina program out of Cullowhee, North Carolina. In his eighth season, He's coached against FBS teams 14 times and come up empty on each of those occasions. So NC State won the toss and elected to defer. And so the Wolfpack will put it in the air. Trenton Gill to kick it away for NC State. And one of the few things that Coach Doran wasn't happy with is his kick cover team chance Right off the opening kick to improve here today. Mullen and Patton, the deep men. This one's going to sail into the end zone and through it. And there will be no return. So Western Carolina starts on offense with Will Jones, 6'4", 220, and a sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. And last season, James, his most significant action came in a loss against Samford. 
Yeah, and, you know, just to tag on what Stormy said, is a man of faith is the first thing you hear when you ask coaches to describe Will Jones. <laughs> They're going to need some faith today. Remember, it's not just Jones being new up there, but three true freshmen offensive linemen here today at Carter Finley Stadium starting against this big Wolfpack defense. They're going to run it on first down with Young, and he runs into a red and white roadblock. There is no gain. Lewis Asus, along with Brock Miller, combining on the stop. And here's a look at that offensive line. The youngsters up there. You got Grady Thomas, who's a junior. Matthew Bear is a junior as well, and the rest of them are young pups there for Western Carolina. Back behind. Will Jones, you've got Connell Young, a couple guys that will run the rock here today. Nate Mullen is a good one out at the wide receiver spot. And Daquan Patton as well. Jones has the time up near the 40. That's a first down catch. So Jones will pick up 17 yards on that play as he fires that football. Incomplete to Absolu. About to <laughs> Tom, huh? It's a big time catch and throw. Will Jones and Western Carolina trusting this young quarterback to thread the needle there on that first throw to move the sticks. Good looking play. That is complete near sideline up near midfield. Stribling had the catch on that one. And Ingram making the tackle. Ball spotted right at midfield, James. And for that Wolfpack D, Val Martin, Lorel uh, Murchison had a great game in the opener. James Smith Williams was dinged, but he's back a very deep linebacking core. You'll see these guys and then some more leads that crew. And some great uh, defensive backs as well. That ball is on the turf, but appeared to go forward and then out of bounds. So they are. They're going to mark it actually at the 47 initially, but let's hold on one second. Fumbled out of bounds. It'll come back to the spot. It can't go forward. Fumble incomplete pass. There, there's a look at the secondary. Tanner Ingle is, is just a sophomore this year and moved into a more natural position, really. He's fun to watch. Number 10 was the nickel back all of last year. Forced to go down over that slot, and this year he's, he's back at safety and already in week one at a big time outing. Well, James, as you saw there, they marked the ball at the 47, which would be a first down for Western Carolina. But it appears that they're going to take a look at this because that ball looked like, in the flow of that previous play, that it might have been a forward pass. And in that instance, it would be an incomplete pass and then return to the ball to the original line of scrimmage, which is right near midfield. Our referee Stuart Mullins, a replay official, Mark McEnany, and so they will take a look at it. Here's going to be our best look down the line. Gosh, the, the pitch relationship was there, but Jones just led Young. It, it really looks from that angle, doesn't it, Tom, that it, that it did go forward. Now our broadcast position is right about the 45-yard line, the right side of the screen, and we had a pretty good look at it here. Again, you'll get a peek at it as Jones flips it out. That's Young who couldn't handle the toss, but again, it is under review. Western Carolina lost its opening game last week at home to Mercer, 49-27, 0-1 record to start the game. After further review, the pass was scored and incomplete. It will be third down at the 50-yard line. The clock should be reset to 13 minutes and 40 seconds. 13:40, and we'll start on the snap. So the official word, James, from Stuart Mullins, our referee, indeed, a forward pass and incomplete. Well, and that's a shame for the Catamounts, Coach Spears' team. Brock Miller was out there to, to fill, but they complete that little pitch. It's a couple yards at least, and they move the chains. Here's a big old third down, a chance for this pack defense to get a big stop and get off the field. Jones tries to reset some of his teammates. They'll run it up the middle. They've got the first down and more inside the 40. Connell Young, the senior from Greensboro, North Carolina. Tanner Engel had to make the
the stop and 12 yards on the play for the Catamounts. How about the fire over on the sidelines in the purple there? And just watch these big guys that we talked about, the youngsters up front doing their job. We've seen some good throws from Jones, and here, the offensive line, they rely on that big push, get the couple yards and then some they need. How about this start in contrast with the way they started in the loss to Mercer last week? It's night and day. Jones pass complete inside the 40 and cut down as young. That was Tanner Engel coming up to make the play. It's a short gain of two yards on the pass completion here in the early going in the first quarter NC State in Western Carolina. Tom Tanner Engel, he's, he's so instinctive and, and he's, he's got the skills to back it up. He, he loves, loves the contact, loves to get up there and, and mix it up a little bit. And he's just fun to watch because when he makes up his mind of what the play is, he goes and he blows it up immediately. Jones. Tried to put some touch on that one. It hits the turf incomplete. Looking for Owen Kosinki. And Asus was on the coverage trying to stay with Kosinki. So right back down to third down now for Western Carolina. And they converted on the ground last time in this situation. Yep, a little bit shorter. Third and eight. It's a lot tougher. Trying to get it. And offsides get a free five and holding their water. Everybody on that three-man front here for the pack. A lot of three odd man fronts for the Wolf Pack here this season. Jones escapes the pocket, throws on the run near the sideline. It's incomplete. Mahari well, Stribling was the intended receiver. Tyler Baker Williams, number 13 in red and white, defending for the pack. A good job, Baker Williams, to just stay with it. The out route, and it takes a, a while to get there. Either the ball needed to be thrown a little bit earlier coming out of that break, or Jones maybe tuck it and go and see if he can go move those chains. Good job, though, by Tyler Baker Williams. You've got some, some new faces. Nick McLeod injured, won't play today. T uh, Tayshawn Smith starting over on the other side of the field at the corner spot. And be alert for anything. This is fake punt territory right here. Nothing to lose for Western Carolina. Brandon Dickerson, the freshman from Fort Mill, South Carolina, with the punt. Player Thomas wants the fair catch and makes it, makes it successfully. 24 yards on the punt. There is no return. We'll take a timeout. Matthew McKay and the NC State offense when we come back. to go in the first quarter. The Catamounts and the Wolfpack, there is no score. Pack having their first opportunity on offense in just a moment. Right now, it's time for our keys to the game, brought to you by your local Ford dealer with James Bates. All right. Thank you, Tom. And let's start with the guys from Cullowee, Western Carolina. Extra special. Special teams were ugly for the Catamounts last weekend. They can't make mistakes in the kick game. A 84-yard kickoff return to start the game. 36-yard punt return shortly after by Mercer in that loss. NC State homegrown. You're at home. The friendly confines of Carter Finley Stadium. You've got this home crowd at your back. You came out and played nice. Well, let's grow from that before you go up to Morgantown, West Virginia next weekend. Hostile territory for your young starting quarterback and a lot of other youngsters especially on this offensive side and there's a look at the numbers of the Raleigh kid Matthew McKay against ECU in the win over 300 yards passing 25 completions on 37 attempts a TD pass did not throw an interception against the Pirates and a 34-6 win for the pack to start the season McKay going downfield near sideline and incomplete that was Emeka Imezi, the junior receiver from Waxhaw, North Carolina. John Brandon on the coverage and a nice job to start offensively. McGirt back out there. Sculthorpe had a nice talk with him yesterday. Joe Sculthorpe, Grant Gibson, Fed Jackson, and Witt. Ricky Person, one of many that will carry the rock here today. And you saw Emeka there with the overthrown football. Good coverage. And that guy, Messi, the junior. They're going to run it with Ricky Person left side up near the 20. This is after last week for Person. Five rushes and 20 yards. Did have a long rush of 15 yards against the Pirates. He's got seven there on second down and now it's third and short. Well, the big story, though, last week, you, you look at the few flaws. You had some special teams that, that they wanted to see a little bit better for Dave Doran's team. But more than anything, 
third downs offensively. 0 for 5 in the first half. Can they get their first try at it here today? Last season, they were second in the conference on third down conversions, and this one is unsuccessful. Off the fingertips of Thayer Thomas, it is fourth down for the Wolfpack and Matthew McKay. Well, that was a focal point all week long, is, is those third downs, and a, a little strong and off the hands of Thayer Thomas. But a nice job for the Catamounts to start this one. You mentioned the contrast, and just back to those special teams. 84-yard kickoff return almost went to the house on the opener. It's just the tone was completely different. Here they get a third, a three and out on defense after a decent outing on offense. Gill with the punt for NC State. Back inside the 30, Nate Mullen and dragged down. Almost five seconds of hang time on the punt from Trenton Gill. 52-yard punt and covered well a loss of two. Absolutely, the one-two punch in there to clean it up was Keyshawn Miller, the backup cornerback. Great hustle. And now a quick word from Advance Auto Parts. I can sign 12 autographs in six seconds. So reminding you to check your battery this fast, easy. First and 10. Western Carolina. And that pass is complete. Shy of the 35-yard line. Catch by Stribling. We check in with Stormy. Well, Western Carolina head coach Mark Spear wasn't too pleased last week with the way his team handled the emotions of week one. So it was nice to see the offense over here on the sideline during that last series that Will Jones was telling everybody, do your job, don't do anything extra. You're right there. Really like the start. Absolutely good. It's got to be good feelings. A lot better than last week right now, Stormy. And they've got a first down, James, beyond the 40-yard line. Absolu, the freshman from Jacksonville, Florida, makes the catch off the arm of Will Jones, and they got nine. We didn't even have Absolu on our 2D. Guy getting in there and getting involved. The play before you saw Stribling standing in there and, and, and holding on tight. A redshirt freshman. He took a hit. Will Jones took a hit on the throw as well. But this is exactly what you wanted, getting off the bus, coming over from Western Carolina. In the start, anyway, can they make something happen and put some points on the board? This, there was a little bit too much of this last week, too. That'll be markers on the field. 76. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First out. That's Jacob Combs. And just like the special teams freebies, just like the turnovers, gosh, you, you can't you can't help a team when you come to Carter Finley Stadium and, and you're outmatched. Let's face it, just from a personnel standpoint, you can't give freebies. And, and from a momentum standpoint, you know, look at the momentum that they had built up. Now you go backwards and it's first and 15. Jones running out of time, and that pocket collapses all over him. Aleem McNeil, the sophomore, and a loss of seven on the sack. And already showing you, whereas it's not four down front anymore, it's going to be a lot more of the three down front because they don't have quite as many of those defensive tackle types, but already getting those fresh bodies in there like Aleem McNeil, who's listed behind Val Martin on that depth chart and just way too long with that rock for Will Jones. Can't hold on to it that long. The run for Western Carolina. They get a short gain on second down of just three. Atkins on the carry. Asus the stop for the pack. Asus is a New York kid, but you know what? You look up and down this, this roster here, Tom, and there are a bunch of North Carolina kids and a bunch of Raleigh kids from right here in the backyard. McNeil from Raleigh, McKay from Raleigh, and here they got the Raleigh crowd making some noise right now on third and forever. Expect something just, just real safe here, like a draw. Not trying to get it all right now, right away. Jones with the time, running out of time, escaping the pocket, but dragged down. Xavier Lias ran him down, loss of four, fourth down for Western Carolina. 
And again, good job by the secondary. Good coverage. There's good protection up front, and then the pocket collapses, comes underneath, and forced to flush is Jones. Two sacks already for a defense who had three last weekend against the ECU Pirates and should set up for pretty good field position for the second possession here of the offense. Brandon Dickerson, the freshman punter from his own 15. Thayer Thomas awaits the punt for NC State. From the 28, Thomas near the 45 on the return. That punt of 43 yards. The return was 11 from Thayer Thomas. Excellent field position from Matthew McKay and NC State. NC State on their home turf against Western Carolina trying to start the season. 2-0 against the Catamounts who have come to play today. NC State went 3 and out on their first possession after winning last week against East Carolina, whom they finished the regular season last year with a victory against. And that rushing attack, it is four-pronged. And we'll get into that in just a moment as NC State starts. It's second possession. They'll go to the air, 45-yard line, and complete. Imezi makes the catch and wrestle to the turf at the 40, 16 yards on the play. Nice throw. That's that's a hard throw all the way across the field. Good timing. Imezi coming out of the break. Remember, C.J. Riley down. He probably won't play for the rest of the season. Very unfortunate. Their speedster, the junior out of Coconut Creek, hate to see that in the opener covering a punt. You got some guys behind him, like Omeka Amezi, who's been the target a couple times already for McKay. NC State is a team last week, over 500 yards of total offense. This inside the 20 on the rush. Lassane makes the rush 22 yards. Keon Lassane for NC State. Well, talking yesterday with Des Kitchen, the offensive coordinator, we asked him, do, do you have a list of players go to? I want to get the ball in their hands. And here's one of them right here. There's some guys that are so electric, you, you've got to get it to them. You've got to make plays, draw them up for them. And on that jet sweep, doing exactly what they wanted to do, a great job by the offensive line to get out there and lead the way and making a guy miss in space. Wolfpack operating in the red zone. Ricky Person Jr. on the carry. They were four for four in the red zone last week against ECU with a couple of TDs and a couple of field goals. And it is our CPI security red zone. Second and eight for NC State. Approaching the six minute threshold of the first quarter. No score. Wolfpack driving. Well, the pistol look here to start. Michael Murphy made the hit. Number 30, purple and gold. It's only a yard for Ricky Person. That's one thing that stood out to me watching this team, Western Carolina, throughout the game last week, is they do a good job of of, of Burst getting off the spot defensively, going and breaking up a pass, going and making an open field tackle. They, time and time again, that's what stood out. Michael Murphy was one of those guys I actually had written down great in the open field. Great reaction. A junior from Spartanburg, South Carolina. See what the Wolfpack dials up on third and seven of the red zone. McKay looking right. That one deflected back down onto the turf and incomplete on third down. Brings up fourth. Ricky Paleo got a piece of that one. Big 99 for the Catamounts. <laughs> yeah, really big. The Paleo diet. Is that what he's on? You know what? He does a really good job as a, as a pass rusher, as a defensive lineman. You use your hands and you separate. If you're not going to get to the quarterback, you can still get up there. If, if you're up there and you're chest to chest, you have no room, no separation. That's good technique and that's good coaching by the defensive line. And again, another third down stop. 32-yard attempt. Christopher Dunn was two for two against East Carolina. And he knocks it through. Dave Dorn's team on the board. Driving it into the red zone. And then the reliable Christopher Dunn, who's now made 18 field goals in a row from 32 yards away. Dunn puts the pack on the board. 3-0 against the Catamounts.
ACC College Football is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Be bold, be confident, live fearless. Your local Chevy dealer, Georgia Drive Chevy. And Yellowwood brand pressure treated pine. If it doesn't have this yellow tag, you don't want it. Back in Raleigh, North Carolina, the pack on a 32-yard field goal from Christopher Dunn, up 3-0 against the Catamounts. But first, a quick word from CPI Security. Identify yourself as a CPI customer. Make CPI yours today. Three nothing Wolfpack, Carter Finley Stadium. Mullen and Patton, the deep men. That's Daquan Patton, number six. No return. Fifty-third season of Carter Finley Stadium, welcoming Western Carolina to the field this afternoon. As we told you, they've met six times previously, all here in Raleigh, and all wins for NC State. Last meeting in the series was 2010. Here in 2019, that man, Will Jones, his first collegiate start. And he comes back on the field, James, after his defense allowed just a field goal to NC State. Uh, and that was a victory. It, NC State took over near midfield and marched it down, looked pretty good until it, things tightened up in the red zone. And now 0 for 2 on third downs. And that's been the big issue this week. There is no gain for Connell Young. Appeared to stumble on the exchange, and Laurel Murchison made sure he went no further. You mentioned all these meetings have been here in Raleigh, but uh, watching the the tape there of, of the Mercer game, what a pretty setting there in Color Week at Western Carolina. The, the game last week has a beautiful little stadium tucked in the hills over there in Western Carolina. It kind of reminded me of my Smoky Bears, Sevier County High School Smoky <laughs> Bears days at East Tennessee. James referencing E.J. Whitmire Stadium, home of the Catamounts. They'll have a home game next week after playing the pack this afternoon. That's incomplete to Stribling. Tanner Engel was in coverage. Coach Mark Spear knows all about championship football, James. Back in the mid-2000s, an assistant for Jerry Moore at Appalachian State. They won three straight football championship subdivision titles, but right now his team is faced with third and ten. And again, you want your young quarterback to not try to win it all. If it's not there, live to play another down. Don't force something and get a turnover here deep in your own territory. Little delay past the 30. That's Young. Goes out of bounds. Very close to the marker. Had to get to the 35. May have had gotten enough on that run. Taken out by Keyshawn Miller, the senior in that defensive backfield and that's going to be a got first it. down they got it good job by young showing off the speed you know he's got good hands he, he came in as a running back moved a wide receiver for a couple of years following behind that lead block and then he's just going to fight once he gets to the corner not being denied good job by number five to move those chains on a third down and ten run play jones rolls and throws too much on it out of bounds Excellent catch by Stribling with just one hand, but he was out of bounds. And we're inside of four minutes to go in the first. 3 nothing NC State. You know, a couple of these misses, you saw one down around the 30-yard line earlier in the game. You almost get the sense that when everything's going fast, everything's going on, you see that there's not so much experience. The guy's not on the same page. It's a lot different, the tempo, the atmosphere from practice. And when you're the second string guy, you're not throwing to a lot of these first string guys. You're trying to get ready for Mercer. You're trying to get ready for these games. It'll come, but it's unfortunate because it's been very close for them a couple times. Spencer piled up the 35-yard line. We'll give him one yard on the carry from Donovan Spencer, the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. We talked about Tyree Adams not being here, the starting the star quarterback, but McQueen, the running back, did not make the trip either. Smiley McQueen. So Young taking a breather, Spencer in, and now here's another third down and long. Young's back in the football game. Last time they converted it by handing it off to number five. Got him out two for four on third down in the game. From their own 35-yard line. 
Young cannot force his way through the initial line of defense. There is no gain. It's fourth down. Tanner Engel was there. Isaiah Moore as well. The 97 is Xavier Lias who has a sack in this game also. That's one thing that stood out to me last week and here early many times in this game. It's, it's a, a wolf pack that, that truly hunts in, in a pack. It's, you see a lot of those white hats at the ball. And good things happen when you swarm the football like that. If that ball happens to come out, you're going to fall on it. That showed in the, the opening drive by ECU down at the goal line last weekend. Dickerson to punt for Western Carolina. Does just get it away to Barry Hines. Wants a fair catch, backs up to the 21-yard line and makes it successfully after a punt of 43 yards from Brandon Dickerson, the freshman from Fort Mill, South Carolina. So NC State, we talked off the top about things being clean. You know, it's a, not a lot of missed assignments defensively, not a lot of explosive plays given up because it's not a lot of missed tackles. Missed, uh, missed tackles make for big, big-time plays by the offense. But a missed assignment, it has to be. Michael Murphy, we saw down near the goal line before they stalled on that third down, uh, the big hit. Just unblocked, came back there and knocked down the running back person immediately. So everybody's got to be on the same page. Dave Doran wants to see, see them get back to that cleanliness a little bit here. Guys not missing assignments and to execute a nice-looking drive. That would be just what you wanted if you're a Wolfpack fan now. Third possession of the game for NC State. Zonovan, Bam Knight on the carry. Freshman from Bailey, North Carolina, and Southern Nash High School failed to gain on that run. KJ Milner made the stop, James. Sound a little bit different than his first carry ever. The first collegiate carry last week. It ended up in the paint. Stuffed this time, though. As you mentioned earlier, there's, there's more than one person in the backfield <laughs> for NC State. Knight had a nine-yard touchdown run in the first quarter for his first collegiate attempt. That's a spinning Thayer Thomas. And he got six. Thomas, the sophomore from Wake Forest, North Carolina, and Heritage High School. Without question, he's one of the leaders of this program, Thayer well, Thomas. Without a doubt, and even as just a sophomore, and, and that's splitting time in the offseason with that baseball program. All right, where are those sticks at? Where are they? The 31-yard line. Know where they are. Make those routes there. Here's a chance to move in the chains for the first time on third down after an 0-for-2 start in this situation. McKay to the 30. Right now, that is short to carry Angeline by about a yard. They got three on the play. And we're inside of a minute to go in the first quarter. Well, Tom, that's, that's what I'm saying. Where are the sticks? Know where you are on the football field. Run that route. That route, route is meant to be a first down route. Run it, get to the sticks, pre-snap, look over there, where do you need to go? And a good job on the other side of the ball by the Catamounts to know where those chains are. Keep them in front of you, keep them in front of that first down marker, and they get off the field again. But be careful. This is, a, you know, fake punts. Uh, Dave Doran got a little uh, cute last week, too. Gill, rugby style. Mullen wants the fair catch at the 32-yard line, and he hauls it in. That is a punt of 38 yards from Trenton Gill, the sophomore. So 22 seconds to go in our first quarter. And James may be a little bit surprised at the score so far. 3-0 pack. I'll be honest. I, I'm very surprised. I, I watched that tape of the Mercer game last week. And this is a different looking uh, Western Carolina football team. And here they are. They, they don't seem to be. It, whereas it seemed like, oh my goodness, the season started. Even though they were at home last weekend in the loss to the Mercer Bears. They, they didn't seem like they were ready to go out and, and play a football game. They calmed down a little bit in the second half. They don't seem at all intimidated. By, by the big Carter-Finley Stadium crowd, by the big uh, NC State Wolfpack team across the ball from them. And they're doing it with their backup quarterback. That one thrown incomplete. Bola Tapelli made the hit on Will Jones, and there's a flag on the play. Number seven, defense. He got a little extra knee to the head on the way down, but the holding call is going to move those chains. Let's see if we can see it here. Chris Ingram's got a hold of that, that jersey. 
Even with those white gloves on, that's that's what you got to do to be smart. You got your gloves need to match the jerseys. You, 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 if it's a dark colored glove, it's it's easy to pull it out. But even though that was that jersey was pulled so much, everyone's going to see it. Jones hurried on the throw and he sails it into the NC State bench. If you were with us at the top of the broadcast, you know that Will Jones is the sophomore backup quarterback. Tyree Adams started last week against Mercer, set a couple of school records for passing and total offense, but suspended due to violation of team policy, according to Mark Spear. And so Will Jones is in there at quarterback. Tyree Adams did not travel with the team from Cullowee to Raleigh, North Carolina. They certainly don't look like they've held anything back out of the playbook to have the new guy, Will Jones, coming into Raleigh. They've, they've let it fly a little bit. Jones tosses it. Spencer. Shoulder to shoulder with Tanner Engel. Tanner Engel, a solid 5'10", 188, and a sophomore from Orlando, Florida. <laughs> I uh, love watching him play, and it's good technique. He just has such good football instincts. Watch him over here now. Watch him keep that outside shoulder free. It, a lot of defensive backs will get caught up with that receiver, get tangled up. He knows exactly where he, where he fits into this defense. He's got to force it back inside. He does just that, and a nice stop to force a third and long. And that is the end of the first quarter in Raleigh. The Western Carolina Catamounts hang it tough with a Wolfpack. One quarter done on a Saturday afternoon at Carter-Finley Stadium. And NC State has a 3-0 lead against the visiting Catamounts. Ready to start the second quarter in just moments. First quarter stats, NC State with a 3-0 lead. But so far, very humble numbers from both teams as NC State last week ran for 191 yards against East Carolina. Western Carolina with the football. Third down. Spencer out of bounds, 45-yard line, well short of the marker. There is no game. So this option look here, every time now, has been pitched forward. So we've seen it once fall to the ground, an incomplete pass. This time they connect just like right before we went to the break. And it's complete, but not much there. And a great job by flowing over there and just knocking it down and getting off the field here defensively. Last time they got pretty close to Dickerson, the punter. Freshman who Coach Spears been really happy with. Player Thomas is deep. And he turns on for him now. Comes up to meet it at the 19. Fair catch made. That is a punt of 36 yards from Brandon Dickerson. So we just showed you those stats for the first quarter for NC State. Complete opposite of what they were able to do last week. Over 500 yards of total offense. Now it is the second quarter. Plenty of time to go for Matthew McKay, who threw for 308 yards last week against the Pirates in a winning effort. Just unable to truly get into a, a rhythm and stay on the football field. And of course, with those third downs, here's another pistol hit. Just three of six for 25 yards through the air for McKay. Hands off this time. Right side breaking through. Zonovan Bam Knight. James, that's 17 yards for Bam. Bam, bam. Nine carries last week for 42 yards. Look at that right side of the line doing a great job there. And then when it comes to Bam to take care of one guy, he doesn't shake to make a miss, just puts that stiff arm out and runs right by him. Flags are out on first and 10. Early stages of the second quarter. 71 offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Can't do it can't do it the little penalties Dave Doran knows it he's, he's hot over there it's, we talked about it with Western Carolina hey look you got you're feeling good finally hey let's go down let's march this sucker down let's go put it in the paint you got a big gain by night and now you go back five yards so, so now instead of first and ten you got them on their heels you're going the wrong way at first and 15 it just can't happen and that's the sloppiness they didn't have too much of in week one this pass is complete just short of the 40-yard line, Dylan Auten Reef, junior from Dallas, Georgia, pulls it in. Devarius Courtner had the tackle, seven yards on the play. McKay to Auten Reef. Where is Dallas, Georgia? Do you know? Huh? 
efforting that information. <laughs> okay, it's, I just wondered. It's West Durham would have known that. <laughs> Westopedia. <laughs> he's, he's over there in Georgia, but yeah, I just yeah. you know, Alan Jackson sings the "Wish Dallas Was a Tennessee" <laughs> song. We wish all the best to our ACC colleagues. Up past the 40. And that one complete. Devin Carter, redshirt freshman, three yards. Ronald Kent Jr. is number 13 in white on the stop. Whistle works, doesn't it? A lot of whistling going on. <laughs> They're holding them up here, giving Catamounts a chance to substitute because wholesale changes there for Dave Doran's squad. But James, here's third down again. 0 for 3 in the game for NC State in this situation. 0 for 5 in the first half against ECU. 4 of 12 on the game. They need to get this one right here. One way or another, they need to move those chains and stay on the field. McKay standing tall. Kind of threw it off his back foot a little bit incomplete. The crowd wants a flag. Thayer Thomas hit the deck and it's fourth down. And we thought he was early. It was a good job early protecting McKay by that offensive line. And it looked like Leo there in the middle that walked back his guy. That's, I don't know that it was that early. And it's off the field one more time. An excellent job on third down, getting off the football field by this Catamount defense and forcing another punt. Nate Mullen is deep. Trenton Hill bombs this one down to the five. It'll bounce into the end zone. 12.08 on the clock in the second quarter. 3-0 NC State after a 58-yard punt. ACC College Football is brought to you by Honda Generators. Very smart. Your local Sherwin-Williams paint store. Painting questions? Ask Sherwin-Williams. And Napa. With quality parts and know-how, Napa Auto Parts and Auto Care Centers can help you keep your car on the road. Back in Raleigh, North Carolina, sunny skies for college football. Dave Dorn's team, though, sputtering here in the first half so far. I'm thrilled to be alongside James Bates this season. Stormy Bonatoni's yeah. down on the sidelines for us. This is our presentation of ACC College Football, and we're so happy that you're with us. Yeah, Dave Doran going to break wasn't happy talking to the officials questioning that call. We went back and watched it, and he did have a, a little bit of a uh, right to, to beef. It, it was a little bit early there on the breakup of the ball to th uh, intended for Thayer Thomas, but no flag, nothing happens. We're Get it right back to Western Carolina now. Fifth possession of the game for the Catamounts. This is far side of Solu making the catch for Will Jones. Only a yard after all that effort. Keeping him in front. Here's another look at that third down play. And there you see plenty early, but no flag. James, that was Trevor Childers who came in a little bit early there. Of course, we do have the benefit of replay. A slow motion replay at that. But Childers, the buck linebacker, playing hard here early. Jones, the throw, and that glances off of the intended receiver. That falls incomplete. Dre Starr was the man Jones was looking for. Ingram, right with him, stride for stride. Right there in his hip pocket. Ingram to force a third down and long. And twice in this situation, they've tried to scoot out the back and go for 10. It's worked once, so guys walked up here in the box. And Jones, the new quarterback, checking off at the line. Two for six on third down of the game for the Catamounts from just beyond their own 20-yard line. Sturdy pocket. Now Jones has to hit the eject button and run. Past the 20, nowhere to go. Wisely stepping out of bounds. There is no gain. Will Jones on the run. Conte and Moore forced him out. And a nice.
nice job. We've seen this secondary do a good job defending. We've seen the, the, the passes broken up and the tight coverage. Here's a zone look. Everybody in front. Again, you see the secondary, the, the drops. Knowing where those routes are going to be run, where are they going to try to get? You know, you got to take that next step. Not just what is my assignment, but what is this offensive guy trying to do to me? Well-coached squad there. The co-defensive coordinators now as Tony Gibson comes into play. The longtime West Virginia coordinator. Thomas can't get away. Connell Young made the play on special teams. He's had a busy day at running back for Western Carolina. Made the play on special teams. That punt was 43 yards, and it was a loss of two on the return by Thayer Thomas. Well, and you know, and that's what you, you have to have. You have to have your stars out there in that third phase. We, they struggled mightily in, in special teams play in the loss last week. Connell Young doing a good job of making sure that that doesn't happen again. A 36-yard punt return, first punt of the game against Mercer. And here, decent field position one more time for NC State. Let's see if they can get something going here on this drive. Home opening win a week ago. Tenth straight home opening win here at Carter Finley Stadium for this program against East Carolina. That one's on the edge, out past the 40. There's a helmet that rolls on the field after an eight-yard gain. Powell on the catch. There is a flag down. Powell has to lead the game. Face mask, number 13, defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. He doesn't have to leave the game anymore. Your helmet comes off, you have to leave for a play, but not if it's because of a penalty. And there you see, the, unfortunately, the, the head wasn't twisting with that, but that's helping him out a little bit. And you know what? It's a good job initially by Kent. He didn't step up and make that open field tackle. That's asking him to do a lot. Very tough to do. But you slow him up, but then you help him out a little bit and tack on 15 yards. That moved the ball all the way to the 42-yard line, right side, Knight. Nine yards on the carry. And to the 33-yard line. Zonovan Bam Knight, the freshman for Dave Doran. And quick now, right back at it. And feeling pretty good and moving those chains right back over the football, the quick snap, and a first down. Second successive carry for Knight. Three yards on the play. First down, NC State. Moving those chains. Inside of 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. 3 nothing lead at the end of the first quarter for NC State. And, and I like this. Des Kitchens, he's got his guys right back over the football. You've got the Catamounts on their heels. Get them gassed a little bit here. This is Person. Inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. Gang tackled 12 yards on the run by Person. And it takes several white purple jerseys to bring him down. Watch this hole open up. You see a great job of going up to the next level by Big 66, Joshua Fed Jackson, the junior from Newark, New Jersey, does an excellent job of going up and picking up his man and, and clearing the way for another first down run. Western Carolina has called a timeout. NC State is in the red zone. Thanks to Bam Knight. We'll come back with the pack up. 3 nothing. Please help people affected by Hurricane Dorian by visiting the redcross.org with the Wolfpack up 3 nothing. We were lucky in this area not to get hit too badly by the after effects of Dorian, but you need to call 1 800 Red Cross or text Dorian to 90999 to make a $10 donation. And we certainly are thinking of all the folks affected by Hurricane Dorian, especially down in the Bahamas. You know, Florida, I live in Florida, and we just sat there forever just knowing that it was going to thrash the coast of the Sunshine State and it spared us. But those poor Bahamian folks, it's. Mm. Heart goes out to him. Person. 10-yard line. Wow. Dragging Catamounts down to seven. 12 yards. Ricky Person, K.J. Milner, finally brought him down. Quick 
with the tempo, right back over the ball after they move those chains, after the strong run by Person. Right side, Person again tripped up, shy of the five. Last trip to the red zone of the first quarter, NC State got a 32-yard field goal from Christopher Dunn, who's now three for three on the season. Person up to 34 yards. You see the, the hunger and the sense of urgency. Not that it wouldn't be there if, if it's a one-man show like a, a Travis Etienne over at Clemson, but, you know, when, when you've got limited carries, you've got Knight who's running strong, Houston, and, and Penix in that meeting room, it, it makes you hungry. Every time you touch that rock, you take advantage. Person stretching for the goal line. And a six-yard touchdown run. Ricky Person Jr. for the back. First TD of the season for Ricky Person Jr., the sophomore from High Point, North Carolina. And now Christopher Dunn for the extra point with 8.24 to go in the second quarter. Well, it's a right-handed offense here on this drive for Des Kitchings, the offensive coordinator. And why not behind big Joshua Fett Jackson, Justin Witt, Take it personal into the end zone for the first time today. The Wolf back in the end zone for the first time this afternoon with 8.24 to go in the second quarter to take a 10-0 lead. It's our five-star drive summary brought to you by Yellowwood. Ricky Person Jr. puts the exclamation point on the seven-play drive, James. And 65 yards, 43 of them were on the ground just mauling that defense helped out remember at the beginning of that drive with the personal foul face mask penalty to give him 15 yards and put him into EC or uh, Western Carolina territory third career rushing TD for Ricky person had two last year against Florida State and that kickoff goes through the end zone there you go Ricky person behind Fed Jackson, Justin Witt over there on that right side time and time again, and look at him, just crash down that entire left side of the defensive front for Western Carolina and capped off with that nice touchdown run in the stretch. You know, that, if, if I'm in that offensive line meeting room, that's, I'd love that. Give me more of that. You know, just, just keep them lathered up and keep them hungry. Good-looking drive and just what you needed there, Wolfpack, with... 824 left in this first half. Western okay. Carolina flags already, but they, they need to do something now on first down. They've gotten themselves in a hole. Number 65, 65 offense, offense, five yard penalty. Tom, that certainly doesn't help. The false start, so now you're looking at first and 15, but on their first down plays, of which they've had 19, their average is just over two yards. So like to get a little bit more going if you're a Catamount fan, your first chance. Connell Young up the middle. Two yards on the run. That is James Smith Williams, number one, the grad student, student from right here in Raleigh. Limping to the locker room. Hate to see that. He was, he was banged up a little bit, the captain. Last week, I was glad to see that he was there listed as the starter. You know, it wasn't the same for guys like C.J. Riley and Nick McLeod that tried to play but, but couldn't go from right here in Raleigh. Millbrook High School graduate. Number 11, Peyton Wilson is in for Smith-Williams. That pass out short of the 30-yard line to Nate Mullen, number two, six yards on the play. Keyshawn Miller was number 28 out there with Mullen, senior from Harrisburg, North Carolina. Well, we like that, those Pennsylvania kids, huh? I know where Harrisburg is, yes, capital yeah. city, baby. <laughs> that is. Yeah. Just so, north of York, Pennsylvania. Well, they force a, another big third down here for the Catamounts on offense. Two of seven. Jones in Western Carolina on third down. 
Jones, Mullen, 30-yard line, not enough. Keyshawn Miller rudely greeting Nate Mullen to stop him after just two yards. Fourth down. Nice job. This secondary has done a fantastic job of keeping these receivers in front, especially in those third down situations. Here it is again. Hey, you can have those four yard dinks all day long. When you, when you need to get eight, you need to get nine. Off the field one more time and another chance for a dangerous return man and Thayer Thomas get his hands on the ball. He is standing at his own 30 yard line. Brandon Dickerson to punt. Thomas stays away, goes out of bounds. Just inside the 40 yard line. And they will mark it officially at the 38, first and 10, NC State. That's a punt of 32 yards from Brandon Dickerson. And Coach Mark Spear mentioned to us on the phone this week that he was happy with the way his freshman punter performed in week one, and he, he looked pretty good here so far in this game. But that doesn't help his defense out much, give another short field for McKay and the guys to go. Here were 619 left in the second quarter. Western Carolina lost that week one game against Mercer 49-27 in a Southern Conference matchup. They did outgain Mercer in that game, James. 445 yards to 419 for Mercer, but came out on the losing end. NC State, little flip. Midfield and down 45-yard line. Lassane on the run. 17 yards. Now, was a flip forward by McKay, so we'll wait officially on whether it's counted as a pass or a run. Again, they hit the same in the first quarter, this little jet sweep, and showing you why, again, you got to get the football in his hands a few times a game. There's a lot of speed on the edge. That previous play, officially a pass play. This is definitely a run from Zonovan Van Knight. And he's got two. That's Chris Campbell, redshirt freshman on the stop for Western Carolina out of the Southern Conference. Well, Tom, we've seen Ricky Person, Bam Knight, carry that football. And another guy that's got that same juice to him is Jordan Houston, the backup running back, the freshman from Maryland. Through the line, close to the 35, Bam Knight on the run. Might be a little short of the marker, seven yards officially for Knight. So we've called the names Person Jr. and Knight and Penix. Houston as well. This is going to be third and short. All those backs looking to convert for the first time in the game on third down. 0 for 4 so far. This is third and very short for NC State. Careful of a play pass in this situation. They'll run it right side. First down and then center. Knight, second level, diving for the 15. Bam, Knight. 21 yards on a scamper before being tackled by Kent Jr. Right, 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 right. All day long, <laughs> those big guys just powering their way. And, it, you know, you mentioned it, that sets itself up nicely uh, for everybody knows where that football is going to go. You got one yard to go. You're in a situation. If you, you didn't hit it, you could go for it on first down. But they just they take the easy way out. And why not when you've got Fed Jackson and yep. big Justin Witt? Bam Knight going right, as James said, and he can run all day. Wolfpack, 10 0. So those guys work well together, they respect each other, and they've earned the opportunity to call the offense. And But it's going to take time, you know, to learn the pieces to the puzzle. We've got four new tailbacks, really, really five, I guess. When you look at Ricky and Trent, are our oldest backs, and they're both been at state for one year you know and so what are they going to be able to do can we have you know both of them in the game at the same time we have a unique uh, situation there and, and really some home run speed was on them and night and jordan houston so i think the backfield is going to create some things that allow that offense to evolve a little bit more than it did last year all right well one back now uh, Two backs back there, rather, and, you know, Coach mentioning they're, they're all young for coordinators McDonald and Kitchings. And running it again. Inside the five, 
First and goal, Zonovan Van Knight. You know, James, last year they had the 1,000 yard back in Reggie Gillespie. And they followed up this year with Ricky Person Jr. Zonovan Knight on display today, going toward the goal line and in. Touchdown, NC State, and it's Knight from two yards away. This is a big counter and pull team offensively. They like to run the football. They like to be physical. Dave Doran, he, you know, he, he came up on the defensive side. He came up there in Wisconsin where they've had so many great big bruising running backs, but they haven't had to counter. They haven't had to have any smoke and mirrors. It's nothing but just fisticuffs there on the right side of the offensive line, and it's worked. Second touchdown run of the season. Zonovan Van Knight from two yards away. Dunn adds the extra point. And now you've got 17 nothing NC State. Well, there's not a whole lot to it. I mean, a lot of times you'll see when you watch NC State, the big pullers and everything. No, it's just straight up maul them on the right side of the line. And you got to think Western Carolina is getting gassed a little bit here. And a good job, too. By night, as you watch the end of that run, a lot of the times they'll run a lot of zone runs, and it's good vision. It wasn't necessarily there in a hurry on the right side, so he kind of bends it back, let everybody kind of flow by. Bam, finding that paint. Back-to-back -back weeks. The youngster, six foot 197, Zonovan Bam Knight. 62 yards on the drive for NC State. Knight in the game now, nine carries, 75 yards, and that touchdown. By the way, his 75 yards, 58 more rushing yards than Western Carolina as a team in the first half. 3.56 on the clock, second quarter. The score was just 3-0 after the first quarter, but NC State has scored twice in this quarter. Touchdown runs from Person Jr. and Knight. Flag came out on the return from Patton up the left side. So the return is 20 yards, but there are two penalty markers on the field. I think somebody got Peyton Wilson in the back. Holding. Number 58. Return team. 10 yard penalty. First down. Stuart Mullins, our referee for this afternoon. As we go down to the sidelines, check in with Stormy. Well, Tom, the message on this Western Carolina sideline and the offensive side has really been just to play your tail off. Coach is saying that a game like this comes down to effort. Don't let NC State outwork you. Play with your heart. Stay confident. You don't need to be competitive because you can win this game if you really work at it. And guys, also just a quick update on James Smith-Williams for NC State. He was getting his shin taped up on the trainer's table, but I'm told he will return as needed in this game. All right, Stormy. Well, yeah, you got to play with that heart, and they've got a lot of it, but you've also got to play smart. You've got to play with that brain. And a penalty here to go back 10 yards the wrong way when you're trailing 17 nothing. It doesn't help out your team. Short run from Spencer. Again, these teams have not met since 2010, and that was a loss for Western Carolina here in Raleigh, 48 to 7. They also played in 2003, another win for NC State, and first met in 1986. They're also scheduled to play again in 2024. Western Carolina has added struggles against ACC teams. They are 0-30 in school history. That's on the edge to Mullen. Steps beyond the marker and out of bounds. Nine yards on the play. Nate Mullen on the catch, the senior. Running out of his shoot, number two. A nice throw and catch to move those chains. Nate Mullen, the senior, transfer from Charlotte. Dad's a football coach, understands this, this game. Good route run and a little bit of breathing room here for the young quarterback, Will Jones. 2.45 and rolling on the clock from the 22 for Western Carolina. Will Jones, the sophomore backup quarterback, pressed into action. Tyree Adams, the senior starter, suspended. Violation of team policy indefinitely. Looks like a timeout was called, and it will be a timeout by Western Carolina, and it's their third. So two and a half minutes to go in the second quarter for head coach Mark Spear and the Catamounts. 
They're not afraid to play stiff competition. They'll play Alabama at the end of the season as another FBS opponent. And the situation today with Will Jones, the sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina, James, forced into action. The All-American quarterback, Tyree Adams, not with the team. Well, and you, you mentioned as a team they're not afraid, afraid to schedule tough competition. I've seen no fear at all in the play of Will Jones. He's come out here and played like this is what he's supposed to do. 11 of 18, those aren't bad numbers. A couple of them have been just off the fingertips of some of his receivers. But I think he's done an outstanding job here in a very tough place to play against a very tough defense of, of just running the show. And he was good from the giddy up. There, he'd love to go march his guys down and put some more points on the put some points on the board for the catamounts though. Now these are the first pass attempts of the season for Jones after throwing 59 times a year ago. Wants to go beyond the 40. And he was looking for Pat Daquan Patton, 5'6 junior, and Jones cannot combine with him in large part because of the defending of Stephen Griffin. Daquan Patton, Stormy was talking about the heart of some of these guys, and <laughs> nobody's got a bigger heart than that guy. He's just a, as tough as can be, wants to make every play, but, you know, at 5'6", there comes a chance, you know, a lot of times those big, long receivers will come back and get that back shoulder throw and able to get it there. But. Patton had six catches a week ago for 74 yards. This is ground game and Spencer. And that's four yards for Western Carolina beyond their own 25-yard line. Isaiah Moore on the tackle. Donovan Spencer, number 20, junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. And a timeout has been taken by the NC State Wolfpack. Leading 17-0. James, that first quarter was a little sleepy for Dave yeah. Dorn and the pack, but they've gained some traction here in the second quarter. Absolutely. O offensively, they've they figured out that it, this is going to be a long day for Western Carolina going on at their right side offensively, and they found something that works, and they're going to stick with it. But don't go away from it until it absolutely gets stopped, and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Dave Doran calling a timeout here to give his offense plenty of time to get back out there and work if they get the stop here. You know, he, you, watch, you watch Dave Doran work those sidelines, and you watch him coach. He called a, a timeout late in the first half against ECU last week. Well, if nothing else, you get him out there, make him punt that football. So many things can happen. And not in your favor if you're punting the football. And here's the third down. First things first, this Wolfpack defense has to make a stop and get off the field. Western Carolina has misfired on its previous four third down attempts. This is down the sideline and incomplete of the double coverage. DJ Thorpe, number three intended receiver. Penalty marker thrown at the 20 yard line. Thrown really late came in there. Not everybody had gotten off the ground and walked away when it came down. Personal foul, shot block. Guard and center, offense. Kelly's decline. Fourth down. It's going to be there in the middle, a high and a low. And there it is, just that. You, you can't go high and low, very dangerous. You just could see everybody get up and get out of there. Penalty declined, so they will punt it away here. 2.15 left, plenty of time. And you know what? A great opportunity when everything's live for your young quarterback to run a two-minute offense. Tabari Hines is the deep man, the transfer from Oregon, who played three seasons at Wake Forest. Fair catch indication, 32-yard line. 42 yards on the punt, Hines, with the fair catch. Hines was at Wake Forest, then went to Oregon. Redshirted up there before coming back home. So two minutes and eight seconds left on the clock for Dave Dorn and the Wolfpack. Doran knew after last season with his team posting a 9-4 and four record. They had to improve in the secondary. That's what he told us at our meetings. And that's been a focal point on the defensive side of the football. Now they've got a chance for maybe a few more points in the closing stages of this first half. McKay play fake. Wide open man. 
into Western Carolina territory is Kerry Angeline. You get the big hitters like that, you may not need that two-minute O to keep clicking. Just gets lost. A bust in coverage by the Catamounts runs right through it. Angeline tucks it and go, and right over the football, back in that pistol look now, is McKay in the offense. Previous play went for 28 yards. The ground at Pennix. Trying to work down that line, he'll lose a yard. That 28-yard pass play to carry Angeline is the longest of the game so far for NC State. Dave Doran and Coach McDonald, Coach Kitchens, they, they've got to be happy that they get this opportunity to run some two-minute O in game action, live game action here. There's still two timeouts left there for NC State. Plenty of time. McKay from midfield on the money at the 33. Spinning away is Imezi. Still on his feet, driving to the 25-yard line. Emeka Imezi on the grab and run and give him 15 yards. We would have liked to have seen a Mezzi in that true two-minute O fashion. Cut that outside and stop the clock. Clock will roll, but quickly back over it. A little short pass in the middle, and they'll stop the clock now with a timeout. So one remaining for Dave Doran. And, and, and looking good, looking crisp, this, this machine is looking pretty good, rolling down the field and through the air, not just pounding it on the ground where they went to most in the second half, or second quarter, rather. There's the route by Emezi doing an excellent job going up and getting that football. You know, again, coaching opportunities. This, this is something, trying to make the big play, trying to go score, but there's a reason why I say coaches are excited that they get, get an opportunity to do this two minute O. Step it outside, stop that clock. It may not be the same type situation next week in Morgantown. You, you want to do everything right that you need to do, everything that you're taught. Do something to coach up. It's still a minute left to play here in a second and four. For the sophomore quarterback, Matthew McKay. This Wolfpack offense looking pretty good here. McKay with 10 straight completions. That last one to a Mezzi for his second catch of the game after seven catches last week for 70 yards. This one incomplete inside the 20. Here's a Mezzi again trying to stretch for that one. John Brandon the third was with him. Yeah, and that's a little too high and hard because it was plenty of time. There was no pressure there on McKay. A Mezzi six foot three, but even that one a little bit too high for him and, and too strong. So here's another third down. One of five. It's been an adventure here on third down. Can the Catamounts get a Get some oxygen in there and make something happen there on third down and stuff them. McKay inside the five, juggling. Was the catch made just shy of the goal line? It's going to be Devin Carter. Ronald Kent Jr. draped all over him. Devin Carter makes the catch. And how about a post-grab flex for 88? Wow, big guy Devin Carter, 6'4", 212. He's walling off Kent. Here you're going to see him up top, and Kent does a good job. He's right there in the hip pocket, fighting to rip those off. That's an excellent play by the defensive back, but an even better play by Devin Carter to keep focus on that football, pull it in, and keep it strong when you're down there wrestling on the ground. And you know what? A good call as well. Right on top of it, the officials. He's down, it looked like, before that nose crossed the football. They'll take a look at it. In 28 seconds as they go upstairs with the review. But you know what? You can't ask for more from your defensive back in Ronald Kemp. He's five foot ten, going up against this big body, six four, two twelve, and that's exactly how you how it's coached up. That's exactly how you rep it in practice. You come through and you rake through those wrists, try to knock it away. Did just that, but Devin Carter able to focus and pull it back in. That's a great job, and now you got to look too to see does that ball go down and hit the ground. Before he secures it there. They're hoping Devin Carter can fill that void that was left when they, they lost C.J. Riley, the speedster. They're at wide receiver. A lot of youth on this offensive side of the ball. Carter's another one of them. Also lost the thousand yard receivers Kelvin Harmon and Jacoby Myers from last year. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. 
So they'll spot the ball just inside the one yard line after the catch by Devin Carter. That was Carter's first catch of the game down to the goal line. First and goal. Oh, look at the heavy set off on the right side. And it off. Oh. Nice second effort. And it's more like a second effort by the Western Carolina defense. There is no game. Trevor Childers leading the way, 27 and white. Wow. Doing a good job, too, Trevor Childers, the junior buckbacker. See, here's, here's one thing. Well, we have a chance. Coach it up on the goal line. What? Can't find Childers on, on my screen here. 27. Go ahead and roll it for a second here, guys. Watch him go up high. Here he comes across. Boom. What? When you're down on the goal line, you can't tackle him low. You, you got to go up and you got to butt him chest for chest. You got to stand him up because you tackle him low. What are they going to do? They're going to fall forward, put that ball over the goal line. Excellent job by Childers to just flow. Good job by the big dogs up front to keep those linemen off that next level. Stands him up, waits for his buddies to come and help him out. Good football player, Trevor Childers. Ten tackles last week, two for a loss. But you got to turn around and do it again now as it's second down and goal. No more timeouts left for the Wolfpack. 20 seconds left in the game. Pack in the first half. Yeah, Pack trying to go four for four in the red zone. A couple of rushing TDs and a field goal from Christopher Dunn. McKay rolling right, flips it to the end zone. It is caught in the back of the end zone for a touchdown, Angeline. Officially one yard. McKay to Angeline. Touchdown, Pack. play call here if, if the ball if it's not there throw it incomplete you run it and you get stuffed again you may not get another playoff to, to punch it in but Angeline is there in the back of the end zone and a nice big target for the sophomore quarterback six foot seven 250 pounder I would say it's, it's run behind those linebackers that it, they, they've got to stop that run first. You're, up, you're on the one yard line. The first things first, you got to take care of that run. So that's going to open up a nice window. Another nice throw and catch. Second TD toss of the season for Matthew McKay. And the first touchdown of the year for Angeline. And it's a big second quarter, James. This time it's McKay and Angeline combining. Yeah, and for McKay, just really rolling and feeling it right now. And a good route there by Angeline. The coverage, John Brannon. You know, he he turns and runs with him and, and reads it, but it's just the, the big body and the big target and a nice touch pass thrown for his big tight end by McKay. 207 yards of total offense in this quarter. And 21 points runs by Person Jr. and Knight for touchdowns and the catch by Angeline just a moment ago from a yard out. It goes eight plays, 68 yards. McKay to carry Angeline, the junior from Chester Springs, Georgia. 21 points in a quarter after Christopher Dunn had made a 32-yard field goal in the first quarter. Returning from the one, Patton. Swallowed up at the 12. Officially a 13-yard return. Daquan Patton. Peyton Wilson, special teams tackle, NC State. Of course, Patton's father, David, Super Bowl champ with the New England Patriots. And the return by Daquan Patton. So just 10 seconds to go in the quarter. And it's the complete opposite of the first quarter. Yeah. For NC State. David played for the Saints as well, didn't he? Yes, he did. A couple of rings with the Patriots. Critical catch in that AFC Championship game in 2001 from Drew Bledsoe. Mm. Corner of the end zone against the Steelers. But I digress. Western Carolina, Connell Young to finish off the quarter and a three yard run. So 24 to nothing as Jackson made the tackle. And Coach Spears' team was hanging tough in the first quarter. James, it was just 3 nothing, but a big second quarter for the NC State Wolfpack. A couple of rushing TDs and a passing TD of one yard to Angeline 
from Matthew McKay, his second TD toss of the season. And we go down to Stormy Bonantoni. Coach, what was the biggest difference offensively from the first quarter to the second quarter? It seemed like a switch might have flipped. Well, we started to get some first downs and be able to play with tempo. You know, early on, Matt was overthrowing some guys. And it's a rhythm offense like everybody. You want to get in a rhythm and then use your tempo. And we got their defense tired. Defensively, you guys seemed very efficient on third down, holding them to zero points in the first half. What were they doing so well that you need to see more of? Well, we're keeping the ball in front. We're tackling well. We had a good pass rush in the first quarter, got a couple sacks. Need to get a few takeaways now. Thanks so much, Coach. Right, thank you. Stormy, thank you. The lead for the pack at halftime. 24-0. They scored 21 points in the second quarter and amassed 207 yards of offense in that second 15 minutes, including a couple of Russian TDs. One from the freshman band night as well. Halftime is straight ahead. 24-0 over Western Carolina, NC State, and this is ACC College Football. The NC State Wolfpack with a 24-0 lead over the visiting Catamounts from Western Carolina. Halftime here at Carter-Finley Stadium. Throughout the season, we'll be bringing you profiles of some of our outstanding ACC head coaches. And today, we kick it off with my sit-down conversation with NC State head coach Dave Doran. It's Driven, presented by your local Toyota dealer. This is Driven. Dave Doran, presented by your local Toyota dealers. Is it underrated the advantage that you feel perhaps playing at home at Carp in the stadium? I think it's one of the better game days in America when it's packed. You know, I felt like our game day we had two years ago when we beat Louisville was one of the best environments I've ever been in as a coach. You can light up the bell tower in red, folks. Wow. What an atmosphere tonight and what a ball game. I would love to be able to put that in a bottle and break it out every week because it was electric. Football hero for you and main influence and Maybe a big reason why you are where you are, sitting in this chair talking to us. You know, growing up, I loved watching Joe Montana. Um, what a gamer he was. Uh, Walter Payton, Jerry Rice, um, guys that came out of nowhere, really. I mean, you know, Division Two at best. From a coaching standpoint, you know, it wasn't really a, a college coach. Um, Tom Osborne is probably who I watched the most, and Lou Holtz growing up as a kid. If you could describe your sideline demeanor during the game how would you how would you characterize that you know I try not to be too emotional and, uh, uh, unless I'm celebrating with these guys I just um, been around some coaches that were really hot-headed um, I don't know how I can act them, ask them to have poise if I don't and so just I'm internalizing trust me there's a lot going on in my head if I'm gonna express myself it's gonna be in the locker room Your favorite way to embarrass your kids? <laughs> <laughs> when I drop them off places, I'll roll the windows down as I'm pulling off and just scream as loud as I can, pulling away. Every time my, my son Connor just drops his head and walks off. Driven, Dave Doran is presented by your local Toyota dealers. The all new 2019 RAV4. Visit your local Toyota dealers or Toyota.com today. Toyota, let's go places. ACC College Football is brought to you by Synovus, the bank of here. LS Tractor. See the LS difference at lstractorusa.com. And your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. Now the beautiful campus here in Raleigh of NC State. And this afternoon, the home of our game, the Wolfpack and the Catamounts. And in the first half, it is all NC State. It's a 24-0 lead over the vid visiting Western Carolina Catamounts from the Southern Conference. From the SoCon to the ACC in our storylines, and how about that huge win in the first week against South Carolina for Mac Brown and North Carolina taking on Miami later tonight. Virginia's now 2-0 with a win last night, James. Florida State against Boise State struggled in the second half and lost that game. And the Clemson Tigers, the team that played them the toughest last year, 
year. Texas A&M, they have to go to College Station, the number one team in the nation, the Clemson Tigers. Yeah, well, right off the bat, you see the two things that jump out are the two that have yet to play. You know, you look at Mac Brown, first game back in Keenan since 1997, sold out, packed house, and, you know, a month ago, you wouldn't have thought that it would be much of a game, but you've got a game on your hands, and, and Manny Diaz, after the, there were some flashes of, of what they can be there in that first half against, uh, first game against Florida, the 0-1 start, but a little bit too sloppy. They can't be sloppy to, to have a good game. It'll be rocking there in Chapel Hill and then Clemson and, and Texas A&M. It was a great game. Nobody got closer to the Tigers That's last right. year. Should be another good one in Death Valley, and it's good to see Bronco Mendenhall, first 2-0 start since 2012 for the Cavs. Yeah, win against William & Mary for Virginia after the win in week one on the road against Pittsburgh, and we go around the ACC, James, and we lead it off with that Virginia win against William & Mary. That was Friday. Also, Wake Forest post a victory on the road against Rice. Yeah, nice to see Wake Forest start at 2-0. A little bit easier against the Rice Owls than it was against Utah State in their opener. Syracuse having a tough time already. Your guys there, the Orange against Maryland in the third quarter. A big game for Jeff Collins in Georgia Tech. Charlie Strong, South Florida Bulls struggled mightily in, in the first game. Didn't do much on offense. They need to win this football game. We'll go see them next week. We'd like to have them in a good mood, right? That's right. They're going to play the Citadel next week, and we'll be in Atlanta at Bobby Dodd Stadium for that game. More scores Duke after its loss in week one against Alabama, trying to rebound in its first ever meeting against North Carolina A&T. And, of course, the game coming up tonight in Louisville against Eastern Kentucky. Ricky Person, a rushing TD from close yardage, taking it in 24-0 halftime for NC State against Western Carolina. Halftime at Carter-Finley Stadium, 24-0 Wolfpack, 21 points in the second quarter to take that halftime lead against Western Carolina. Tom and James with you, our broadcast position here at Carter-Finley Stadium. And James, it took a little while. It was only 3-0 after the first quarter NC State, but they got that traction in the second 15 minutes. Yeah, we, we talked all about that cleanliness there of the first game, how they looked sharp, didn't stumble at all, didn't stutter, and, but they did early in this game. You know, and a lot of it has to do with the way Western Carolina came out ready to play. They look good offensively and defensively, but kind of NC State, you heard Dave Doran tell Stormy about it going into the halftime locker room. We got in a rhythm, talking about getting in that rhythm, and there was no rhythm for them in the whole first quarter. Second quarter was different, though. Especially with the running game, as we look at the numbers at NC State started to pile up the yardage as far as the ground game was concerned, James. 135 yards in the first half rushing for NC State. Yeah, how about that? You know, in some of those, some big plays, some big runs. Zonathan Knight had the big 21 yarder. There were 15 plays actually eight plays rather that were 15 or more yards there in the first half for NC State so they started to put the big plays together and you know third downs aren't on there but third downs continue to be a little bit of an issue for NC State just two of six there in the first half Western Carolina just two of nine in the first half on the other side and again over 200 yards in that second quarter for NC State this is our power play James it's brought to you by Honda generators it's the ground game for the pack <laughs> yeah, and it's leaning it's a lopsided car Carter Finley Stadium here today because just about every one of those runs, whether it's Bam Knight or Ricky Person, they've gone to the right side behind the big bodies over there on the right side of that offensive line and showing you why right there, just washing them down and doing a good job, being very physical, no tricks, no smoke and mirrors at all, just smash mouth football to put it in the end zone time and time again. 39 yards in the first half for Person, 75 for Zonovan Knight, and they both had a touchdown run. Second half is straight ahead, 24-0, Wolfpack. Just moments away from the start of the third quarter. 24-0 Wolfpack. And moments ago, Stormy Bonantoni catching up with the head coach of Western Carolina, Mark Spear. Well, Coach, a big focal point for your team this week was to focus on you guys and worry about your technique and your effort. What do you need to see more of? Well, you know, first of all, we've had gone through some adversity. They don't have our starting quarterback or guy who was our starting quarterback. So, you know, just getting those distractions out of the way. I thought we played hard. 
Uh, you know, a little bit of the size and, and all of NC State started to wear on us. I thought we played a great first quarter. Really proud of our defense. Uh, you know, offensively, we just got to, second quarter, we started having some penalties. And we, we just got to focus on us not trying to be bigger than the moment. Just, again, just doing our jobs, you know. And, and uh, you know, we, we just got to come out and have a first good series on both sides of the ball. And, uh, you know, especially on defense, get get the ball back to our offense. And if, if we can get back in rhythm, you know, we just got to go go play Catamount football. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, Stormy. Well, Coach Spear, he's talking about how that it, it, it undersized a little bit that defensive line of his, the, the linebackers there that is the NC State offense just started to kind of smash it a little bit in the second quarter, really wait on them, but they got a chance to go in there and, and get some water and catch their breath. And let's see here on this first series that they can get back to the way they got off the bus and really played hard early in the first quarter. Penix, the deep man, this kick is way short. Just past the 25-yard line is where they'll mark it at the 27-yard line. And Seth Williams had to make the play on it. So Matthew McKay and the Wolfpack had an outstanding second quarter. McKay had a TD pass, and he handed off to Person Jr. and Knight, and both of those guys took it to the end zone. So McKay leads the offense out onto the field for the third quarter. Matthew McKay, sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina and Wakefield High School. And another bright spot in the first half by this offense is that Lassane continues to get some touches. He's got some speed that you don't see all the time in college ball. It's right side and Ricky Person Jr. Five yards on the carry for number eight. Right back to that right side. It's not something that we track, but when you go watch the tape, I'd like to see how many times they really, if they have run it, to the left side. Every time has been behind Fed Jackson and Witt. No backs this time. Player Thomas at the 38-yard line. First down yardage. At seven yards on the pass from Matthew McKay. That's good to see. Nobody there in the face of McKay. He, he throws it into tight coverage. They are Thomas and right on the same page. Nice throw and catch. And he really started the roll, getting a rhythm, not just as an offense, but as a quarterback in the second quarter, picking right up there. McKay has an open man. And that's Ottenreef. The play didn't look so good no. to start, James, but it ends up with 20 yards and a game for NC State. Yeah, they'll take the end result. You know, we saw this a couple times last week. The back is going to go this way, and it's going to be a fake, which shouldn't fool anybody. A play action pass to nobody. And this time, the back does get it and moves the chains one more time. Add Jordan Houston to the list for 13 yards. Drew Michael White, the senior on the tackle of Houston. And NC State going up tempo. Yeah, just when you, you thought you've seen it all, first and night, and here comes Houston. Don't forget about Penix to the other side now. Houston gets the call again. Jordan Houston is a freshman from Waldorf, Maryland. Six yards on the carry. Looks like a out of the forest gump. We had Cleveland from Detroit. <laughs> Houston from Maryland. <laughs> I don't know where he's from. We got Dylan Ottenreich. Reed from Dallas, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they call him Tex. I don't know where he's from. <laughs> By the way, Dallas, Georgia, northwest ah. of Atlanta. Okay. Auten Reef, who had a catch on this drive. Uh oh. A little trick or razzle. Tabari Hines down near the 10 yard line and dragged out of bounds by Ronald Kent Jr. 13 yards on the play. Ronald Kent Jr., the best defensive back in this secondary, I think, the emotional leader of this team, stays put. He was the one that was there on defending uh, the, the big throw and catch to Carter and did a good job. Here he does a good job against the reverse. Everybody running the other way, but he stays at home. And still a first down, though. First down and goal here for the pack. Trent Penix was upended. Two yards. But, you know, with that reverse, with that, that big misdirection, you, you 
as an offensive coordinator, when you know you start to get a little bit of a padding here, as they're here in the CPI security red zone, uh, move down inside the 10 now. You'd like to put a few things on film that West Virginia, their opponent next week, they've got to spend time on. They've got to spend time on bringing in clips and, hey, we got to defend this, whether they run it or not, or whether they're setting something else up. This offense does a good job, did a good job last year and in week one of setting things up for later in the game, do it for later in the season. Incomplete inside the five. NC State is four for four in the red zone. That pass to Thayer Thomas was broken up by Kortner. Three TDs and a field goal inside the red zone for NC State. Seventh year for Dave Dorn, five straight bowl games. Fourth most wins in school history, nine and four last year and five and three in conference play for NC State, which started the season last year five and all, and won three of their last four. This to the end zone, and it's incomplete. And Mezzi tried to make a circus catch. Mezzi has to fight out of some, some hands there. And he's a big, strong guy. The junior who actually, nice back shoulder catch early in the second half about this time last week against ECU. And that's, it seems to be a, a favorite target for Matthew McKay, and they seem to be on the same page. 25 yards away for Christopher Dunn. And he is now two for two in the game. Christopher Dunn has made 19 straight field goals, made his last 15 field goals of last year and his first four of this year. Seven nothing Wolfpack on the second field goal of the game by Christopher Dunn. Good from 32 and just a moment ago from 25 yards for Dunn to make it 27 nothing and now five for five in the red zone with three TDs and a couple of field goals for Dave Dorn's team. Patton is the deep man. Trenton Gill will kick it off for NC State. Wolfpack close to the six and one home record last year. I see some flags on the field, James Bates. Out of bounds. Gill had done a fine job of kicking it out of the end zone. It's a nice weapon to have when you don't give him the option to return, but not here. It's not what you want. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. By rule, the ball would be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. All right, let's check in with Stormy Bond and Tony. Well, as you guys saw, James Smith-Williams went to the locker room at halftime. He did have a bit of a limp, and when he returned, had that boot on his right leg. I was told it's just precautionary, though. He had x-rays, taken a look at it, and everything was fine. But with the lead, it just makes more sense for him to take as much care of it as possible. And you guys know he wears that number one as a reward for his leadership. He means so much to this defense and this team. Absolutely, Stormer. That number one is, is awarded by Dave Doran. So. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Uh, again, going, going the wrong way here for the Catamounts. And trying to get something positive going, but that number one, very special for that captain. Captain is something that the, the team votes on, but Dave Doran is the one who awards a special player and a special leader, number one jersey, so hoping to get big number one back out there. Get a big trip to Morgantown. Jones has to dance. Third sack of the game, NC State. Aline McNeil, Ibrahim, Conte combining on there on the play against Will Jones. Brock Miller also there pressuring the quarterback. Just, they just open up the gates there and just let them come run free. And they, unfortunately, they did such a good job early in this game protecting the young new quarterback. That, that right guard. Arthur lined up so deep right here. Got to be careful, almost too deep. Draw a flag. Lost six on first down. Into the flat and complete, short of the 30. Connell Young. 
Tayshawn Smith bounced him out of bounds. They like throwing the football to Connell Young. Former receiver came in as a running back, spent a couple years over there at the receiver spot. And back to the running back, but taking advantage of those hands. And here's a third down and 16 now. Big hill to climb for Jones and the Catamount offense. Will Jones forced into action, suspension, violation of team policy from starting quarterback Tyree Adams and not with the team. Jones over the middle, favoring the left side and hitting his man at the 40, DJ Thorpe. DJ Thorpe had a big game last week against Mercer. Six catches, 130 yards, both career highs, but not enough for a first down for Western Carolina. And again, this, you know what, watching this this defense, and the, we know the job that Dave Huxtable has done in the last few years as a defensive coordinator. Now he's got help in another great uh, defensive mind in, in Tony Gibson. They're well coached. So, you know, hey, go ahead. You can have that all day long. We've got five more yards to go. We'll force the punt, get off the field, keep them in front, and make this sure tackle. Hines will allow it to bounce inside the 10, inside the 5. Brandon Dickerson buries the Wolfpack inside the two-yard line, a 59-yard punt. Let's take a timeout. The Wolfpack in front of Western Carolina, 27-0. ACC College Football is brought to you by your local Ford dealer. The Works TriVac, available at TriVac.com. And Z-Max Micro Lubricant, available at Walmart. The Wolfpack in space. It is our Tweet of the Week, brought to you by Toyota. Christina Koch, former NC State student and graduate, of this fine institution on the International Space Station, high above the Earth. I wonder if our signal reaches the International Space Station, James. I would have to think it does, right? Well, you know what? The, the love for the pack does, regardless. Up there, howling, that's, that's kind of cool. High above the Earth. Hundreds of thousands of miles in orbit. Because we all know the moon is about 200,000 miles from the Earth. The sun is 93 million miles away, but we can feel it pretty good here today, although the conditions have been very nice. Temperatures in the mid-80s for most of the day. Here as we go inside of nine minutes in the third quarter with the pack comfortably out in front. Well, we weren't sure what kind of weather we'd get for the longest time. We thought it would be kind of pretty wet with the way Dorian was hanging around, but it's made its way up the coast. Beautiful day for football. Left side. Left side. Knight. And that is right. All day. Ten yards. Bam Knight. Bam Knight runs hard. He, he's a nice compliment to not only Ricky Person, but even when you, you take it a step further with Jordan Houston. Just got good pad level for a freshman. I mean, just nice and quick, but when he needs to power up, he can put those shoulder pads down. Good pad level, can run through guys, and can, you saw the bounce in the cut. Can make a miss, too. Good looking back. He's got a couple touchdowns already here early in his NC State career. One last week and one this week. Knight has 87 yards on the ground rushing this afternoon. And that touchdown run that James referenced in the second quarter from two yards out. Gets the call again. Spun down at the 22-yard line. Two yards short of the first down and eight yards for Bam Knight. KJ Milner on the stop. James, you've mentioned a couple of times that coming up for NC State, they have to travel to Morgantown, West Virginia next Saturday at noon. Now, you'll recall that last year, that game in mid-September, scheduled for here at Carter-Finley Stadium was canceled because of Hurricane Florence, so the teams will meet next Saturday. They haven't met since 2010. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, Tony Gibson, we mentioned that the new defensive coordinator here for Dave Doran. He spent a lot of time up there, his old stomping ground. And, you know, it's, a, it's a tough place to go play, even though they weren't pretty in week one and ugly day so far in their game against Missouri as the first down will be gained here by Bam Knight. But it's a, uh, you gotta have 
have everybody on the same page up there because it's a they love their football and it should be should be a, a, a nice game and a, and a chance at a win and you look at that they come back they've got Ball State and then it's a trip to Tallahassee to play Florida State before their bye. This is a team that a lot of people weren't sure of in the preseason because it's so young, but a chance to be all right sitting at the halfway mark. McKay has to throw it away. You mentioned that game against Florida State, James, last year in early November. A win for NC State at home, 47-28, and in that game, Ricky Person Jr. had three rushing touchdowns. One of the nine wins last year for Dave Dorn. In fact, he's gone back-to-back, -back, James, 2017-9-4. 2018 9 and 4. And he joins Dick Sheridan and Lou Holtz as the only NC State head coaches with consecutive nine win seasons. Seven years, that's gone by pretty fast. And he's, he's really, really done a good job of, of bringing in not only players, but good kids to get these programs. How about this catch? Nice snag there. Go up and get it by the same. Runs out of the shoe. But Man, Pac fans got to be excited about the same as much as they hate to see C.J. Riley go. The same, Devin Carter, a couple guys that will fill those shoes, hopefully. Good job defensively to, to drop them still. A lot of meat on that bone before a first down. Nice hands nonetheless. Third and eight. McKay on the run, flag is out. Stiff arms a man at the 30, cut down at the 37, but again, a flag was thrown as Brandon made the tackle for Western Carolina on a scrambling Matthew McKay. Personal foul, hands to the face. Number 71, offense. Half the distance to the goal, third down. That's against Joe Skullthorpe. Joe met with him yesterday, and that's just too easy right there. He <laughs> lets go late, and now it, it, an offense. Ongoing theme last week, just 4 of 12, 0 for 5 in the first half on third down conversions, 2 for 7 so far in this one, and now they've got 21 yards to go if they want to make it 3 for 8 after that penalty. Okay, from the 5. Cutting across was Hines. Turns it up field and forced out of bounds beyond the 30-yard line. Tabari Hines by Devarius Courtner. And 18 yards on the play. Well, made it interesting, but unable to reach the sticks nonetheless. So one more chance for Catamounts to get that goose egg off the board here with 542 left in the third quarter. <laughs> it hasn't been easy, though, has it? How long has it been since a team, Tom, has scored a touchdown here in Carter-Finley Stadium? Over, over 300 days? Or? Yeah, we're going on 11 quarters because East Carolina was the opponent at the end of the yeah. regular season last year. That is home games in the regular season. And so they shut out East Carolina as far as touchdowns are concerned in two straight games with week one this year, and now we're into the third quarter without allowing a TD. Illegal substitution, 12 players in the defensive formation. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Oh. Oh. Boy, what a punch to the gut. <laughs> They're finally going to get off the field. It's been so tough there the second quarter, just running the football down your throat. You do a good job of holding them to the field goal first time out. You're going to have decent field position, best field position in a while. But you, let's see. 12 men on the field is, is the call, and it certainly looks like a lot of dudes out there in purple. Purple wave. A free first down. Mm. 11 in the picture and a return man. And that is 12. And a penalty and a first down. 5.07, now 5.06 and counting. Third quarter, Ricky Person Jr. It's just a yard. A minimal gain for a person junior. Again, Trevor Childers, junior from Lincolnton, North Carolina, East Lincoln High School. Ten tackles last week. 
big hit third down early in the game. Get him rocking a little bit. He's, he's fun to watch. He's been all over the field here today. Continues to go and drops person there for a one yard gain. On second down, McKay. Hines. 45 and up to the 47. That is right on the stick for nine yards and a first down. Tabari Hines. Dangerous in space. And is it enough? It's very, very close. It's very close. In fact, they want to measure. And there is a Western Carolina player shaking up as well. With 414 on the clock. That's your Michael White, number 22, James. So while they attend to White, we'll take a timeout. 27-0. NC State has the lead late in the third. Here's a look at Mikey White from Johnson City Science Hill. Helped off the field. Science Hill Hilltoppers. Who's the most famous Hilltopper? Do you know? Mm. I'll give you a hint. All right, my man. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> give me a little more of that. Well, all right. Hey, right, Mikey White, get back in there. Jeez. When I was a Hilltopper, I never lost baseball game. Let me guess. <laughs> initials SS. Yep. Or, or initials HBC. Or HBC. Headball sure. coach. Yep, Steve Spurrier. Steve Spurrier. Johnson City guy. Coach Spurrier did incredible things in the ACC with Duke. James winning a conference championship back in the day. Yeah. How about that? He, he still reminds everybody of it, just like he reminds everybody that he had the best team in that, that new football league. That <laughs> cut things short, the Apollos. Did they get it? Championship rings for that? Uh, he got himself one. He got himself <laughs> one. He did. There's a, there's a third down pickup, the third of the day on the ninth try. Last time, remember, it was third and forever. They missed it, but were helped out with the, the penalty there. Too many men on the field. So a fresh set of downs over midfield here. Houston. Near the 35-yard line for Jordan Houston, ridden out by Michael Murphy. 15 yards. The same type look that we've seen twice today, the same. Hey, here's our playmaker. Let's just hand it to him. Get him outside in a hurry on that jet sweep. Couple lead blockers to lead the way. And he'll do the rest. Houston and the same. I'm, I'm gonna scheme and game plan if I'm an opposing defensive coordinator when they line him out there. Be careful. McKay uncorks it. Back mm. corner of the end zone incomplete. Looking for Thayer Thomas in a race with A.J. Rogers defensively for Western Carolina. Just a little too strong, put a little bit more air under it. And Thomas has himself a touchdown. Had the defender beat by a couple steps early in the game against ECU last week. Somewhat similar, overthrew it a little bit too strong. James, this is the 13th play of this drive for NC State. Started way back, didn't it? About their own goal line yep. after that nice punt. That punt by Brandon Dickerson pinned him deep. Inside the 20, Angeline. He's got a touchdown catch in this game. That came in the second quarter. 15 yards on the play. That is Trevor Childers shaking up and favoring that right leg. This weather the way it is. Hot and steamy, grabbing that calf. You hope for him is just a little cramp. There's Angeline setting up shop and then making guys miss the big guy. 6'7, 250. Not only a good target, but athletic out there in space. Childers coming over there to help out. He's the one down on the bottom of the pile. Pops up there. Angeline had, had a drop last week on third down, making up for it here today. So they attend to Trevor Childers, Jr., Lincolnton, North Carolina. 2.49 to go in the third. And he'll walk to the sideline under his own strength. <laughs> 27-0 pack. 
Second game as a starter for Matthew McKay. Took over for Ryan Finley, who threw for over 10,000 yards in his career, James. Second most in school history behind Phillip Rivers, who has the ACC record at over 13,000 yards. Similar type demeanor, too. Kind of cool and calm. You, you don't get a sense that he'll ever be, even as a senior, that raw, raw, screaming guy. That Finley was the same way. That pass is just a little bit too high for Angeline. McKay with that miss, now 18 of 28 in the game and 200 yards in the touchdown pass, which did end up in the hands of Angeline in the second quarter of one yard. But James, we talked to Matthew McKay yesterday, and Coach told us zero nerves in his first start last week against ECU. <laughs> he, he saw him. He, he came over and talked to us after their walkthrough. It, just a cool cat, you know. I mean, and it's a, it's a different kind of leadership. It's it's you know it's a confidence. And it's a guy who puts in his work, though. He, he leads by example, not only out here on the field and in the workouts, but in studying that tape and, and knowing what's expected of him, knowing the game plan. A very bright kid and, and family. You know, a lot of NC State's got a brother on this team, or another brother in graduate school. He's 16 years old, he graduated from high school, which is right here in Raleigh. Like Doogie Hauser out there <laughs> for the Wolf Pack. Younger brother Tim is a freshman offensive lineman for McKay. Right side of Knight. By the way, he's gone over 100 yards rushing. Had 107 prior to that carry, which takes it inside the five-yard line, first and goal. I give it right back to the big man. The night time is the right time. <laughs> he had the right time to go tonight. Yeah, nine carries and 42 yards of a touchdown last week against ECU. Seven yards of the previous carry. So that's 114 yards of the game for Ben Knight. Just added to those totals. And the touchdown run, which came in the second quarter, a two-yard TD run for Ben. The night time is the right time. The night time is the right time. There you go. Right side of the line. The right time for Bam Knight. Punching it in one more time. Second touchdown of the game for him. And also of the two-yard variety. Touchdown run of the second quarter and now in the third for Zonovan Bam Knight. Third TD run of the season. Another look, and he's just, you know, just a, a great big wash. You see the movement they get going, those guys get a good low pad level up front. Right side of that offensive line, and center Grant Gibson has done a good job here today as well. Making it easy for the young freshman behind him. Bam. It's a good name, too. Bam Warman. They name you Bam. Tom. Uh -huh. Alongside James Bates, I'm Bam Warman. <laughs> I wish. All right, our greatness made here. Feature presented by Sonovis. After that scoring drive of 98 yards, capped by the Zam Knight run. This is our greatness made here, presented by Sonovas and Jacoby Brissett, NC State quarterback in 2014 and 15, over 5,000 passing yards, 43 touchdowns in two seasons for Brissett, and all of a sudden he finds himself as the starter for the Indianapolis Colts with the retirement of Andrew Luck. How about that? He started off as a Florida Gator back there in Gainesville before he made his way here to Raleigh. And the rest is history. Good things happen to good guys, pretty good guy. And you know, a lot of good quarterbacks that have come through here in Raleigh more than anybody in the NFL right now. Russell Wilson comes to mind. Philip Rivers, Ryan Finley, fourth round pick of the Cincinnati Bengals. Mike Glennon, right? Yeah. Brissett played a little bit with the New England Patriots as well. You know, it, it's funny. The ties. Bill Billichell. <laughs> By rule, the ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. Got to get this cleaned up. All right, let's do some trivia, James. All right. We check in with the Aflac Duck. Oh, Aflac. There it is. <laughs> For the Aflac trivia quiz, three former... NC State quarterbacks are slated to start week one of the NFL. Rivers, Wilson, Brissett, most of any school. What three other schools have two starters in the NFL? That is your Aflac trivia question. Chew on that for a moment. Western Carolina with the ball, its own 35-yard line. Will Jones, incomplete. Will Jones, incomplete. 
that hit coming in there. You thinking about the Affleck trivia question? I am, but I won't get it. Okay. Uh, it's a tough one this week. You know? I have an idea, maybe. I like the names we listed from NC State. Told you about Philip Rivers, all-time leader in passing yardage in the conference. You know, Philip Rivers won the Tangerine Bowl three times and was the MVP twice, and also won another bowl game on top of that. Oh, he was here. Really? Yeah. I kid you not. Huh. I thought the Tangerine Bowl. Was How about that one? Must have been the end of the Tangerine Bowl right about that time. <laughs> I would have thought it, they would have shut down shop at the Tangerine Bowl. <laughs> Where was the Tangerine Bowl held? No? Florida. Long attempt. Oh. Almost a grab and a juggling one at that by Patton. That's a nice try at it right there. Coaching point here, Tyler Baker Williams, a sophomore. He's, he's right there in phase. As he's going to turn and run 13 right here. But watch now. You got to watch those eyes. When those eyes of that, that receiver, when they get big, you got to snap that head around. You, you trust yourself. Snap that head around. He's got a chance at intercepting it. You, gotta, you know, especially knocking it away. You, know, you don't. You open yourself up, maybe a penalty or, or the receiver coming back there like Patton. Finding a way to snag it. Just rip that header in. Well, by the way, Chance, Russell Wilson was the MVP of the 2010 Champ Sports Bowl. Do you know who they beat in that game? West Virginia. Oh my goodness. 23 to 7. Back in 2010, that's their opponent next week. All right, back to the Affleck trivia. Remember, we told you three former NC State quarterbacks slated to start this week for the NFL Rivers, Wilson, Brissett, most of any school. Here's the answer of the other schools with two. What do you think? Ah, oh, you. How about that? Murray. They feel twice. Kyler Murray. Oh, oh, all right. Heisman Trophy. I'm give him tech as well. All these guys jumping around, like Brissett, you know? I mean, like, I'm sure they may, uh, later on in the, in the broadcast, they may claim Brissett on some Florida trivia question. He played for the Gators. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers on there, too. Derek Goff. That's Bailey Hockman on the run. He's a transfer from Florida State and a sophomore. You know, it's, you know we, we've talked up Matthew McKay quite a bit here today, but it, was, it wasn't it was a sure thing that he was going to be the guy. Bailey Hockman, after transferring, was new in the spring. And, you know, just trying to learn things in the spring, but the lefty in camp, he, he really came on and made it interesting. It, it deep into camp. Strike to Tabari Hines for eight yards. Nine sixteen. you've got Devin Leary, just a redshirt freshman from Sicklerville, New Jersey. And it's funny, you got a, a ton of Carolina kids here on the team, and you do have quite a few kids from New Jersey. So that is the end of the third quarter. Billy Hockman has come in for Matthew McKay and the Wolfpack will head to the fourth. In command, 34-0 against Western Carolina. James, we've reached the fourth quarter, game two of the season. After a win against East Carolina last week for NC State, James, looking pretty good today. It didn't start off all that great, but the second quarter really spurred on this offense, and they've taken control of this game against Western Carolina. Absolutely. You, you, they didn't necessarily pick up where they left off 
they, they kind of hit a little speed bump in that first quarter, but second quarter on, they, they've really picked up and, and looked smooth. Got some, you know, good reps, and they're even in a situation now where Matthew McKay, their starter, they can sit him down a little bit, get some reps for, for, uh, for Bailey there at the quarterback spot, and they've gotten, again, a lot of guys some action, and they've really kind of started to get in that rhythm offensively and defensively after that first quarter. Here's a look at some of that action from Matthew McKay, who will shut it down at 18 of 28, his numbers. And really when he started to, to kind of click, had about 10 passes in a row, 10 completions in a row. Angeline is one of his favorite targets here today and a great big target, six foot seven, the big tight end. So Matthew McKay, who came out with his first collegiate start last week against East Carolina, won that game. And NC State is on its way to another victory. This has been the fourth from Carter Finley Stadium. Ten points in the third quarter for NC State to extend its lead to 34-0. They possessed the ball for 12 minutes and 19 seconds in that third quarter, controlling play. And they are well on their way to victory against Western Carolina. That would be the seventh straight in seven meetings, and all here in Raleigh for NC State against the Catamounts out of the Southern Conference as Jordan Houston gets the call. As we get the clock rolling in the fourth quarter, 34-0, NC State. And they're going to improve to 2-0 after the win against East Carolina last week. Houston picked up 12 on the carry. So now officially it's 11 straight quarters without allowing a touchdown at home. In their last nearly three games. What a catch. Auten Reef. Inside the 40, 13 yards. You know, these, these big tight ends, Audrey is not quite as big and long as Angeline, but still, and this time doing it for Bailey Hawkman, going up and, and focus, good focus. We've seen a couple times the double catch where the, they've been well defended, able to focus and big strong hands, just pull it down, move those chains. And James, you would have to imagine that co-offensive coordinators, Des Kitchens and George McDonald, have a lot of confidence in McKay, but certainly have confidence in this young man coming into the game, Bailey Hockman. Absolutely. He, he pushed. We'll further expound on that when we come back with James Bates, 34-0. line usually on the right side here today this offense for the NC State Wolfpack and just a young pup from Bailey North Carolina Bam Knight six foot 197 pound freshman on his first carry last week against rival ECU into the paint just like that had a couple more here today and a great job for number 24 so far. And he is our Hardy's star to watch. A couple of TDs today, both rushes of two yards in the second and third quarter to the end zone. So that's three rushing TDs on the season for Zonovan Van Knight, the freshman. Oh, look at that. That's 6.8 yards of carry. Ooh. That is robust. Just demoralizing for an offense. When you can carry that football every time you get it, you're going over five yards. It just must feel like nothing's working. 116 yard day for night. Sales out of bounds. Last year, James, NC State, as far as rushing yards were concerned, they averaged 143 per game. That was 12th in the conference and outside of the top 100 in the football bowl subdivision. They've got 249 yards rushing today against Western Carolina. They've, they've had some big plays, too. They've had four explosive plays, over 20 yards. They've had a, a lot that have been just under 20 yards. That one's not going anywhere near, and so it'll be a third down and long for Bailey Hartman in this show. So third down and 11. There's still something they need to get cleaned up, and this still can, can go to work here. It's, you mentioned how 
and Bailey Hawkman is, is a nice backup, but it's, it's also nice that you're getting him some reps here before you get into the, the teeth of your season. Let's see what they've got on third down and 11. Got to make the 29. Dumps it off. Penix. To the 30. That's about a yard short. Needed to get to the 29. White made the tackle. And that is Penix. Slow to get up. Fighting hard to try to get it there. It looks like it's going to be just shy where they mark it. But more importantly, Penix. So the training and medical staff out to look at Penix. Obviously, in college football, they can go back up and take a look and add a targeting, but there's there's no targeting there. He just seemed to bang his head on the turf. Redshirt freshman from right here in Raleigh at Sanderson High School. Part of that talented running back core for NC State. We've seen Person Jr. at night on display with Penix and Houston as well. Good sign there as he is sitting up. We had the clip earlier from Dave Doran talked about the two old guys in that running back room, a person in Penix, and person's just a sophomore, and Penix is a redshirt freshman. So very green, but that's good to see right there. Penix is up. Fourth down coming up for the Wolfpack. Thirty-four nothing Wolfpack against the Catamounts of Western Carolina. And that is Trent Penix, who was shaken up on the last play before we went to break. Came up just short of a first down at the 30-yard line. Penix being attended to. So fourth down, they're going to go and get it with Knight. Hockman handing off to Knight for three yards, and they convert on fourth down. Last year, they went for it 17 times on fourth down, made 10 of those for some sort of statistical perspective. Pretty easy call this afternoon against Western Carolina with the comfortable 34-0 lead on fourth down and converting for NC State. Houston. Eight yards. Jordan Houston's been a bright spot, James, in the second half. Absolutely. This whole season, even in week one, had a few good-looking plays. And it's just, it, it makes you hurt for Penix a little bit even more. You know, hopefully he's okay. But this, I think they're good teammates, and they want to share, but they also <laughs> want to, you know, want to be the guy in that running back room. You got so many guys doing well, you get a chance and you get dinged up. That's Houston again. He just went over 50 yards rushing in the game, picked up 10. Jordan Houston, the freshman. Well, and you know, there, there are so many different phases. You talk about the, the different styles. I mean, look at just, just Person, Knight, and Houston. Just all three really completely different running backs. And for Houston, he's 5'10", 185, but he, he runs with some power, even though he's a smaller guy. He had the six carries, 35 yards last week. He's also really good in space. We've seen the speed, but he's also got some wiggle to make guys miss and can power through. Look at him go down to the two. Jim Michael White had to make the stop. Six yards. Jordan Houston. Ricky White back in there. Hill topper. Good to see. Houston take off again here, James. Close yardage. 12th play of the drive. Give it to him. And he gets the job done right side. Great blocking up in front, too. Officially three yards on the run of the touchdown. Jordan Houston. Over that right side, we talked about the the big offensive lineman. How about that celebration, James, for your first career touchdown run in an NC State uniform? He's pretty cool. He's 
freshman brother Bam Knight got to do it last weekend. He gets it this weekend. It good blocking by the line, but also by the receivers out there to clear the way. And it's making it easy for number 20. Again, you're just going to watch these, these big guys over here just wash them down. Looks like that 74 McGirt has moved over up to that next level. And a nice job. How is it, Provolone? <laughs> Pro <laughs> Pro villain. Pro villain. The Pro Villain doing a good job. Desire Pro Villain. Pro Villain. And not not, not, not Pro Villain, but he's chasing that cheddar. <laughs> Houston is putting him to sleep. Yeah, well, Pro Villain does a good job, too, of, of running his defensive back just back into the end zone. And just an easy scoop for a score there. And a nice scoring drive. Bailey Hockman now running the show, the backup quarterback as McKay take a rest for the rest of the game. They're on that one with 10.50 left in the game. 74 yards on that drive and now 510 total yards in the game for NC State after amassing 505 total yards last week in the win against East Carolina. Daquan Patton, fair catch. Of course, that new rule coming in last year, you can fair catch it in the field of play, but you can get it to 25. So on the defensive side of the football for NC State, Tony Gibson, his first year co-defensive coordinator with Dave Huxtable, 23 years in coaching, and he's got quite a story, Stormy, as to how he arrived here in Raleigh. Yes, Coach Gibson told us he had no real plans even to be coaching this year after his most recent stint in West Virginia. He was going to do a different part of the game, but then he got this unexpected voicemail when he was at the airport from none other than Coach Dave Dorn, and the two of them didn't know each other at all. They didn't have any mutual link, so it was a big surprise. But Gibson said it was kind of meant to be. His daughter, Ashton, about a year ago, moved here to Raleigh with her fiance, who got a job at USA Basketball. And after talking to his wife, it was just one of those things where when you least expect it, expect it. He was the perfect missing piece to what Dave Dorn wanted in this defense, and it was a perfect fit for Coach Gibson in Raleigh. Yeah, isn't that great, Stormy? I mean, he thought he might even have to just take the year off from coaching. He was, you know, still under contract there from West Virginia. And just the stars align. And from a from a guy, like you said, that he had never talked to before. He, he thought maybe it was five yard penalty. Second down. But it, but you know, it's talking to Dave Doran about Tony Gibson. They, they had Ted Roof here, who was a longtime defensive coordinator and a great guy at Georgia Tech, and they liked having that other mind, you know, those, those great coordinator minds in the room, uh, and they wanted another guy like Ted Roof, a sounding board, if you will, for Dave Huxtable. Somebody could coach the defensive backs as well. Tony Gibson coaches those safeties, and uh, it was just a perfect fit, and, and, you know, beyond <laughs> being a good fit on the field, off the field, personal life for the Gibsons. That's, that's just great. Do you think Coach Doran said, hmm, that third game of the season is at West Virginia and Tony Gibson is available? Well, the Maybe one thing, the one thing though, it's, it's a new faces up there in the set. But, you know, personnel-wise, hey, this guy can do this, this guy can do this. So th there'll be a little bit of help, but not as much as, as you would have liked. And you remember when we asked Coach Gibson in our meeting about the West Virginia game? He said, we are focused on yeah. Western Carolina this week. But there was a smile that came across his face about yeah. going to Morgantown next week. <laughs> Maybe so. If you spent that much time up there and you go up there and win, are you allowed to burn a couch? Like, can he just go burn a couch on his own? You get to do whatever you want. If you can go in there and get a victory and start the season three and zero after starting last year five and zero for for NC State. You know there have been. There have been a lot of great football coaches that have come out of West Virginia. And, you know, and Rich Rod, a guy that he played for at Glenville State, is is one of those. But uh, you know, I want to say that, uh, that Jim Grobe is a West Virginia guy. Nick Saban is a West Virginia guy. Jim Grobe, of course, did such a fantastic job at Wake Forest as the head coach. Won an ACC championship and took him to the Orange Bowl with Riley yeah. Skinner. Yeah. Our broadcast colleague at quarterback, 12 yards on the play. Stripling making the catch. Tommy Bowden, Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo Fisher is a West Virginia guy. And how about tonight? Jimbo and Texas A&M welcoming the number one team in the nation, the Clemson Tigers, who've won two of the last three college football playoffs and been in the playoff 
three years in a row, James. I mean, incredible. As close as anybody got to beating those Tigers last year there in College Station. It's a uh, man. Death Valley be rocking tonight, won't it? Now, Syracuse gave them a run for their money also yeah. last year after beating them two years ago at the Dome. Syracuse struggled against Maryland today, though. At the 25, Hines up to the 31, 2, and 3 and dragged down. You got it. You got to expect to block the ball. You know, you can get through these guys. It looked like they ran right by the punter. Expect to make that play. Go lay out and knock it down. Make a big play. Time for our Toyota Let's Go Places for the Wolfpack. Yeah, let's go check out Jordan Houston, who just got into the end zone. There he is, number 20, highlighted. You got the bunch set, the right wide receivers down at the bottom of your screen. Get it out to him. Look, you got a hat on a hat. You're going to have one guy for him to make him miss. Try to make one guy miss, and here comes the flow. Everybody's flying over there. He makes that one guy miss. It'd be interesting to see if those other guys could make the tackle. All right, so you set that up in the third quarter last week. Okay, so now you come back at that same look. Bunch set up top. There goes Houston. Everybody's got to go flying, right? Get out of there. Go get him because he's a fast guy. Don't let him turn that corner. But you know what? They got you. False steps by the linebackers. They run themselves out of the picture, and then they come back the other way. Uh, Auten Wright, the, uh, the lead blocker, is going to do a great job on the defender. Mitch, uh, Matthew McKay tucks it and goes. So it's, it's just an example of, of when you got speed on the field, everybody takes notice and how you can kind of play that chess game. You set something up early in the game, you come right back to it. You, when you think everybody thinks they know exactly what they're doing, go flying out of there. A good series of play calls there in that win last week against ECU. Right, Des Kitchens. NC State approaching 300 yards on the ground, 284 now after the run by Dabs. Bailey Hockman handing off. That's a play of three yards. So once again, NC State going on the road at noon next week against West Virginia. Team's game last year was canceled because of Hurricane Florence. Supposed to be played right here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Next week for Western Carolina, it's a home game against North Greenville University, the first ever meeting between the two teams. And their campus is separated by less than 100 miles. So, James, maybe just a, a summary of what you think Western Carolina was able to get out of today. Well, they saw one thing, that, that it's, it's not a team that's going to come in here scared of the big bad wolf, so to speak, you know, the toughie the wolf. Um, but you know, I was impressed with the way that they, they got off the bus because it, it wasn't a pretty open form last week. And I, and I thought it would be... 41 and nothing type of feel in the first half, to be honest with you. Just the way that tape looked. They really surprised me in the, in the way that they, they, you know, fought hard. And really what impressed me was, was Will Jones. Was, you know, the, it didn't always have the time, the, the protection. But I think that, you know, we don't know again what the suspension and to Tyree Adams. Is it over when they get back to town? Is it going to last for a little, little while? And if it, if it does, if the circumstances merit for it to be a, a longer suspension, well, Will Jones is plenty capable of, of going and, and meeting with some of these teams on their schedule. And it's a, you know, it's it's not easy to come out here. But don't feel sorry for Coach Spear and his team because he definitely won't let you. He said these are the paydays that will pay for 30 scholarships for our football players. 30 kids will be able to go to school because of the money we make on this trip. So, you know, it's 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 interesting. You, you hear about people complaining, oh, beating up on this school or that school. You know, you, it's, it's kind of part of it because not everybody is a big money maker with their football program. Most of them, on the contrary, drain money from the school but opportunities. And these kids are in good hands. They, they've got a, a good coaching staff, good, good people that they're growing up around. And they're going to play Alabama on November 23rd to close out the season. First down for NC State. When Dave Doran looks at this tape, James, what's he going to like about the effort against Western Carolina? He might have some things to say to his team about the first quarter where they led by just three points. But then after that, as you can tell, the result is exactly what they were looking for. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's kind of tricky, to be honest, because he... You started with some stumbles a little bit, so you definitely, again, you have stuff to work on. And it's, uh, I, I found it interesting. One thing that that uh, Coach Mack said up at uh, 
UNC after the win, after they beat South Carolina last week, he said it's easier to be hard on them when you win. You know, which which makes a lot of sense. You, you beat up on a team, they don't want to hear it when you're when you're 0-2, but when you're 2-0, you can coach them hard. And, and they've got some things that they need to clean up. You know, it's it got to a point where it was just kind of like a smash fest because that's what was easiest and that's what worked and, and got you to 40 and nothing and to set it up. It's just this offense will look a lot different next week. You, you get the feeling, you know, some of those those big bodies like the, I, I, I like watching NC State when they get in that pull game they get in that counter game. Watch those those big offensive linemen. I guess now as a linebacker, I don't have to take them on anymore. So it's fun, easy for me to say up here. But that kind of is, is a fun wrinkle that they have. But you didn't have to go to a lot of that today. But still, a lot to work on. And you're 2-0 and feeling pretty good. And for the most part, with the exception of James Smith-Williams, seemed to be pretty healthy coming out of this one. And he also got some good reps for a backup quarterback, some good reps for a lot of backups across the board. In game one, there were 22 different people that had a tackle on defense. So they got a lot of guys in. We've had, you know, we got a chance to see more of Houston. Got a chance to, to see even more offensively of a guy in Lassane who's got a great future. 314 total rushing yards in the game. They're going to add to the total around the end and inside the 25-yard line for NC State. Dab's running hard, huh? Will Dabs, number 38. So it's the Dabs brothers, the Thayer brothers, and Will and Cave, yep, Will and Tyler Dabs. Will, that's your junior. Running back that passed through the 20-yard line. It was a the Wayans brothers used to do a skit on in living color called the Brothers Brothers, like the Smothers <laughs> Brothers. That's kind of what it's like. <laughs> well, it's all smiles today, certainly for NC State. A little slow out of the gate, as we've touched upon during the course of the afternoon. And now fourth down. So Dave Dorn is going to win his 45th game as the head coach of the Wolfpack and 68th overall, ninth year as a head coach for Dave Dorn, who was the head coach at Northern Illinois, won a couple of MAC championships, and took that program to the 2012 Orange Bowl, which he did not coach in, had taken the NC State job by that point. So we'll take a timeout for just a moment. We're inside of two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Lane Snapper. Red Snapper. Long Snapper. All right, here we go, Long Snapper. Joe Shimko, a freshman from Jersey, and I'm the one that looks like me. Why a Long Snapper? What made you want to snap it long? Well, sophomore year in high school, I just wanted to get on the field and I saw an open spot at long snapper and I gave it a shot and I'm getting it. Uh, camps definitely helped out, but it was mainly the work in my house. I used to snap 400 balls a day my summer going into, I think, my junior year. And that really took off my snapping career. How about when it's cold? It gets cold up in New Jersey. My dad has an office. He's got a hole in it that's long enough. So I just bring the target in there and I would snap it there. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See? That's the kind of stuff I wanted to know. Joe, go get him tomorrow, man. Good luck Definitely. to you. Thanks. All right. Joe Shimko. All right. Joe's gotten a lot of work. There he is, number 91. Freshman from Belmar, New Jersey. Appreciate Joe taking the time to hang out with us. A new segment that we're going to do, the long snapper. A little, a little bit different. That's why we got the little bit different open for you there. But enjoyed hanging out with him. And, you know, it was really interesting to take it a step further. His freshman year, he was a linebacker in high school, but his his coach was a long snapper and said, hey, you, you should give this a try. So his sophomore season, he, he went out to the Rubio long snapper camp. Chris Rubio who was a great long snapper in his day. Went to UCLA and snapped for three years there. Zero bad snaps. I don't think Shimko's had any bad ones here. He may go four years, no bad snaps, but a, a nice find, a scholarship guy. Found his way to... Play big time college football. It's awesome. And first, now a quick word from Works. The Works Axis. Push the button and easily pivot from jigsaw to reciprocating. The Works Axis. 
one nothing NC State. They will improve to two and zero on the season. As you've heard us mention and reference, Dave Dorn's team is going to take on West Virginia next week. That'll improve to three and zero on the season after this win against Western Carolina. It'll be continued dominance in the series against this Southern Conference foe. Seven wins in seven meetings, and all here in Raleigh for NC State. Country Road, you got to keep them from playing that. Like when you go up to Rocky Top, you got to keep them from playing Rocky Top at UT. You got to keep them from playing Country Road. You don't want to hear that much. It's one of those great college traditions, great college songs. So just 30 seconds to go now. And the Wolfpack can celebrate another victory here at Carter Finley Stadium. And for the third straight home game, they have not allowed a touchdown to the opposition. There you go. Next crew in here, Ball State. Can try to change that. Looking good. Uh oh. Uh oh. There's a on turnover the turf. on it. Who's got it? It looked like the pack, and the pack has possession. Going to the final bell, Dave Dorn's guys. He he said this way. Told Stormy at halftime. I want, I want to see it. That ball turned over more. I want to see him go after it. I got C.J. Hart on the cover, James. Nice. That, that one down there early in the game last week. Here they wait to the very end. But last week it was a huge play. Tanner Engel with the big pop. ECU had driven on their opening drive all the way down to the goal line. And Engel knocked it loose. More head fell on it. You know, I also want to extend some thanks to first year athletic director here at NC State, Boo Corrigan, and his family for hosting us, James, yesterday in a beautiful reception, heavy hors d'oeuvres. We had a great time chatting up college football. Oh, it was nice. It was, you know, welcome to town. Just, just got here in July and really a, a nice evening and good to meet some other people in the athletic department as well. He had a Nice little crew over at his house, so that was that was very nice. And he's, he's got a pretty good football team here to start this season in his first year in Raleigh. They're 2-0 oh with a 41-0 win over the Western Carolina Catamounts. Dave Dorn on the Wolfpack. On to victory here at Carter-Finley Stadium. And next up, it's going to be West Virginia. A wonderful day here in Raleigh, and it ends with a win for the Wolfpack. Next week, we've got the Citadel against Georgia Tech. We're down in Atlanta. We start at 12.30. For James Bates and Stormy Bonatoni on the sidelines, I'm Tom Worby. Thanks so much for watching our presentation of ACC College Football. The Pack over the Catamounts, 41-0.